Friday, you bastard. Opening this weekend. Now that Bill O'Reilly's career as a newsman is on the skids, come on by and check out his new venture. It's Bill O'Reilly's Pleasure Spin Zone. I've always wanted to drink wine so fast, it's like it was being introduced intravenously. You can get that and so many other devices of special pleasure at Bill's store, like the... The... And, of course, the ever-popular... That people love to name. I call mine Mr. Newsman. Bill's got products so hot we can't even say them on the radio. In fact, he's probably got a lot of stuff that should never be recorded anywhere. Wow, that is inappropriate. Stop by Bill O'Reilly's Pleasure Spin Zone today and get a coupon good for one free falafel rub. Plus, with every purchase over $50, you'll get a free thank you phone call from Bill himself. Wow, wow. Thank you, wow, wow. Hey. Uh, who's this? It's Bill O'Reilly, baby. Uh, hello. I was calling to say, thanks for shopping at my store and what you wearing, baby? I gotta go. No, wait, don't hang up. Goodbye, Bill. I know your boss. Bill O'Reilly's Pleasure Spin Zone, putting the O in O'Reilly. Oh! Well, it's eight minutes past ten. Look at this, boys and girls. A little wow. uh, bonus for you here today. Yeah. Well, I don't know what the hell we do now for 52 minutes. We got a few yeah. spots in there. Huh? We don't. This, see, this doesn't work. Here's a classic example of why this whole deal, this Greg Reed nightmare that he splattered on the rest of us like Freddy Krueger, uh, this doesn't work. I mean, I thought I had solved a problem, like kind of an intermediate way until we uh, figure out what planet we're all on, and by starting the show officially at 11 o'clock. And that was okay when uh, Stern bailed out even at 10.20, 10.40, 10.45. Now, yesterday at 11.07, it worked out a little bit awkward, but that was okay. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. This is supposed to be payback. But today, I come in here, and I'm sitting my ass down here about, I don't know, about 9 o'clock, whatever it was, 10 after 9, and George and I are confabulating, and all of a sudden he says, oh, by the way, it's a tape today, uh, they're done at 10. Yeah. This is at about 20 past 9 this morning, I find out that, oh, they're done at 10 o'clock, because it's a stupid-ass best-of tape. Well, so, so what happened to our, solu our uh, you know, solution for the problem? that I thought had solved it so magnificently that we started at 11 o'clock. And all the other people, you know, we do a little foreplay before that to fill that void in there. Mm -hmm. But uh, everybody officially who's listening to all their other shows, the Joe Rose and the uh, Goddess and whatever they're listening to, they can come over here at 11 and be sure they're not going to miss part of the show. We just uh, we started at 11. Well, guess what? Is that going to work today? No. Well, I guess it might work today, but I have no idea what you're going to do between now and 11 o'clock. I Mr. thought I'd play the sounds of silence over and over again. Yeah, that might work. Sure, it was a big hit. I still think that... <laughs> that a medley of those might work till 11 o'clock. Probably get about 20 share. Don't you think? Worked out. Yeah. We got the whole on somebody's commercial face. somewhere. M mostly mine. So I guess that we have to postpone all the other stuff, because I've got a story here that is just... Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I can hold it back to 11 o'clock. Well, you could always do it twice. Yeah, I can do it twice. What kind of crap is that? The audience out there don't want to hear it twice. <laughs> if it was good enough for Ranieri. Are you knocking the dead? That, that, is, that has to be of all the rude and crude and insensitive things that you've ever done. And, boy, that sure takes... Oh, I know what I'm going to tell you before anything else, and that's the story about my uh, inartful agent and lawyer, uh, Bozo. <laughs> if ever... Yeah, my inartful uh, pizza burger is sucking down piece of crap. What a jerk. Oh, it shouldn't be funny, but it is. But it is. It's, it's funny in a pathetic way. My lawyer and, and my agent, I use that term very loosely. <laughs> yeah. That's where an agent is, my mother would say. Uh, calls me at about 10 after 2 yesterday after the show to give me a song to dance about... Well, uh, uh, I talked to this one over here. You know, he's uh, putting his tentacles and testicles out there for these satellite radio people, which when we get to this story, it's going to blow all of that out of the water anyway. Because it looks like that whole whole business about satellite radio and how certain people think they're going to get into that, and it's going to subvert the dictates of the FCC and all the chilling effect on free speech and entertaining your audience. Well, guess what? I didn't think it was going to take too long, and boy, before you even realize it, already the wheels are grinding to bring that to a real fast halt. But we'll get to that eventually. But at any rate, so uh, here's, and I, I wanted to pass along a little of my own uh, input there, since it is my livelihood we're talking about. And so I said to my pizza burger swilling agent, I said, uh, well, you know, uh, something, I, forget, I don't even remember what it was, something about Stern and about Sirius. And uh, I hear, at this point, I, you know how when you're talking to somebody, you realize, even if it's over the phone, you realize they're not listening to you? Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you, like right now. And at any rate, all of a sudden I hear, 
realizing full well that whatever I'm saying is not being heard because uh, here's the cell phone, you can hear you know, that sound like the cell phone's being held against somebody's ass. And now all of a sudden I hear, I have two pizza burgers and two medium cokes. Now, did you, could you decipher that? Where do they sell pizza burgers? I don't know. But Norma does. <laughs> Of course, I wonder what Twinkie was going to be eating the other one. Although, like I told you before the show, probably both pizza burgers and both Cokes were for a Miss Kent. You know, he's a growing boy. A growing boy? Yeah, growing schmuck. So there's what I'm dealing with. That's what I have to contend with, a total, absolute, spastic waste of my time, which is why we're sitting here now at uh, 12 minutes after 10, and we're, like, doing the limbo rock. You know what I mean? We have no idea whether we're, like, fish or fowl or, or what the hell's going on. I think fowl. Because this just plain don't work when it's one of these 10 o'clock days. And it really isn't so much the timing, but you have to have a little consistency. You can't say, well, guess what? The show starts at 11, we're on 11 to 2, and on the days when Howard don't feel like showing up and they play a tape, well, uh, I don't know, from 10 to 11. Because your idea of, like, doing the same stuff twice, that leaves me a little limp if you catch my drift. Doing it twice? Well, it's that good. It, it is that good. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll ramble on on this one twice. Because, obviously, they, we don't have a psychic audience, so they don't know that. See, this whole deal of starting at these different times, this doesn't work, okay? That's one thing beyond a shadow of a doubt, I'm going to say right now, with all deference to Stern or anybody else, uh, it, it just doesn't work. It's unprecedented. Let me say it again. It's unprecedented in the history of the broadcasting industry that, uh, and again, keep in mind, a music show is not really a show. It doesn't make any difference when that starts. It's all the same stuff you heard a million times, plus what we're saying, too. But regardless, a music show can start any time. A talk show doesn't start at staggered times. <laughs> surprise. Yeah, surprise. On Greg, in Greg Reed's world, it does. It is whatever uh, suits his purpose at a given day, just like writing a whole bunch of conflicting contracts that overlap with each other. I, I still say it's not a bad idea. Let's just do 10 to 2. And whenever they decide to open the pot, just like during that awful uh, press conference they had the other day with Mr. H. Absent, the uh, Dave Wants that gets fired but pretends to resign press conference the other day, uh, you know, where they shut the pot off. When they want to open up the pot, then you'll hear the show. Right? Maybe, maybe that's a way to uh, solve okay. it. Of course, then nobody will hear the beginning of the show. Nobody will yeah. have any idea what's going on, kind of like back to those 9 o'clock days. This man has taken this show and just butchered it. Everything he touches, man, he just continues convoluting and twisting and yanking and just destroying everything like a gigantic, out-of-control Gila monster, like a lunatic. And we were doing just fine. Everything was uh, a okay. Oh, we're fine. Yeah. Spring book was humongous numbers, breaking into money. Everything was great. But no, just cannot. It's nonstop diddling at QAM. Can't stop diddling with this uh, show, especially. I mean, the other one's a uh, morning show. He's already broken it into a million pieces. He's never going to put it back together again. I guess he thought, like, you know, strutting around like a proud peacock. Once he put Stern on there, I got Howard Stern. I got a back out of my I got Stern. Even though, of course, it's like sliced up like a piece of Swiss cheese. And so watered down and diluted and uh, bleeped out that nobody can even figure out what's on half of the time. That's part of it. But the big problem, of course, is the fact that Stern now, as everybody knows, is going to get serious. He's going to um, satellite radio in 13 months or less. Or less. And uh, more and more, like the article I read the other day says, it looks more and more like less. Remember less? Right. Less Desmond? No, less uh, Brown in the band right now. Less that? Or busy going down. I think that's what we're doing. We're going down. Yeah, because I got this letter at the end of the show from Chronic Greg in Coral Springs, um, which I hate to upstage you a little bit, but I'll, I'll read his facts. I can read it again later, 11 o'clock, right? Right. In fact, we'll do, uh, what we'll do is we'll do the same hour four times. <laughs> we can just play the tape back. <laughs> For anybody who missed it the first time, that's how good it's going to be. It's going to be dynamic. You'll see. WQA, you have a they didn't have an appointment. As soon as I started saying you have an appointment, they bailed out. How could they have an appointment when we're never on at this time? I mean, wouldn't it have been nice for somebody to tell us, well, Stern's going to be on uh, tape on Friday, you guys are going to be starting at 10, huh? What difference would it have made? Oh, it does make a difference. I mean, you, you know as well as I do. You have to have a little psychological sure. preparation, H. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil, how's it going, buddy? All right, Pally. Hey, you know, you know when he's on uh, tape, it automatically ends Who's at he, 10, Howard? Right? Yeah. It automatically what? It automatically will end at 10. It, there's right. no... They yeah, because right? Robin's not doing the news, see, because uh, you can't play yesterday or last week's news again, so uh, it cuts out a whole chunk of the show. Yeah, because that's how it's always been. I mean, ever, ever since I've been listening to Howard, it, when, it, when he's on tape, it automatically ends at 10. They stay yeah. on normal commercial breaks. 
you know, it's it's normal. Right. It's, like a, it's whatever it is. Mm -hmm. but that's what it is. Well, this doesn't but, work. It doesn't work for me. Uh, it, nothing will, really. I mean, unless they put you on a 10 every day. Yeah. See, that that's what the Neil Rogers show was. It was on a 10. And uh, now all of a sudden we're supposed to start whenever the hell this other show ends. And again, it's got nothing to do with Stern. I don't have any bug up my ass about Stern, but it's just the idea that we've got management that doesn't understand how a show works. This is not the way radio works. Well, sometimes you used to start at 10. You also started at 9. Well, the, the 9 was 10. another nightmare. That also uh, helped to set the show back 10 years. That was another nightmare. Last week you started at 10.30. There were a couple of days you started at like 10.45. Well, yeah, that's only since Stern has been on, right. Right. I remember one time you started at like 10.58. Yeah. yeah ten, it's ten, forty, ten forty seven thirty. Maybe we that have was, like that was a good day. That was a good show today. Ended at ten forty seven thirty. I marked that one down. How about if we have gambling, where we get like an over under at what time you start? Right. Eddie, Eddie K could handle the overs and unders on that. I like it. Good, good yeah. thinking, Pally. All right, but uh, from, uh, Monday I'll take over ten fifteen. Okay. <laughs> okay, you got it, man. <laughs> That's good. You can have an office pool. What time does the old fart come on? Huh? What time does Stern finally bail out? We can do it every day. See, if they would have told us ahead of time, if we'd have known, like on a real radio station, although probably they won't tell us, but if we'd have known he was going to be off today, it was going to be a tape, we could have said to the audience yesterday, oh, well, we'll be starting at 10, okay, so everybody tune in at 10, and then we can, like, really start the show. See what I'm saying? Right. It's entirely you can't possible start a show. You can't have any continuity to your show when nobody knows what time the show starts, Greg. That's not the way radio works, Greg. I realize you're not a radio person. You're just a walking basket case and a bundle of ego. But that's not the way it works in the world of radio, Greg. And by the way, you made an illegal deal with the Stern people, Greg, because this is a four-hour show that's on from 10 to 2. And we can joke and suck around all we want about, well, so much fun to work a lot less and have only three hours or, well, well you know. To try to, like, uh, convince yourself that you're enjoying doing it and having a good time. But the fact of the matter is it doesn't work. It doesn't work, boys and girls. And, yeah, if I uh, sound like I'm going to, like, spew it all out today, you're absolutely correct. Today is the day I'm spewing it out. All right. I got an agent that's busy ordering pizza burgers while calling me about urgent business on the phone. An absolute imbecile, man. A silly person. If he would spend more time taking care of his important clients as he does about uh, playing fantasy baseball and uh, playing with the goofy uh, wackos that are you know, censoring other shows on the same station that have nothing to do with me, if he'd spend that much time and we'd actually get something done. Maybe somebody would actually have heard this show. Enough. You know, it's just like this thing on the election. Remember Stern was going on with that whole ego thing about how he was going to get Kerry elected and he was going to get pushed out of there? Did it work? No. Don't, I don't think that happened. Somewhere along the line, I missed the result of that election. You know, it would have been nice to be able to talk into somebody with, with, you know, without disparaging our own fine audience, <laughs> like the ones we had calling yesterday, Reverend Jones 85 times and the little Julio uh, Circle Jerk crowd. Uh, but other than that. Hi. Yeah, and, and, oh, yeah, Prozac Ron. And that's what we had yesterday. Of course, uh -huh. it was a holiday. See, I think we should make up for yesterday by just taking off today. Yesterday was a holiday. Hi. We should head off with all due respect to our veterans, right? Let's take off. I think eh? it's disrespectful to the veterans that we had to work yesterday on a holiday, so we ought to take today off. See ya. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. How about Barbie Jones? Put his ass on the case, okay? A twin Put that old it. craggy fart on there. Is he dead, Buddy Epson? can only hope. No, I don't think so. Yeah, he's dead. Huh? Look it up. I still like that thing. What? It's a great theme. Oh, look yeah, it up. Yeah, look up, Buddy. It is a great theme. Let's do a TV theme. <laughs> I wasn't going to do that, but now that I've started that. Anyway, here's, uh, let's do the break. We'll do a break. we got a couple of big breaks this hour. We can actually get our own breaks and own commercials in the show this hour. This whole thing is the biggest mess. You know, it's like, it's like falling into a gigantic tank of diarrhea. That's what this whole thing engineered by Greg Reedigan is like, this whole stern business. It's like falling into a big, big tank of smelly, nasty, as if there's any other kind, diarrhea. Elephant diarrhea, not the human. And that, that's what it's like. And when we're like trying to keep our head above water and, uh, you know, keep our chin up, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Buddy That's Epson what your operations manager is trying to do. He's trying to play a mean chin ball is what I'm hearing. Anyway. Buddy died last year. Buddy Epson died last year. Well, in honor of Buddy Epson, Barnaby Jones always gets his man, Bill Ross, on Channel 7. Doing those great promos. Promos and homos. Channel 7. A lot of homos. How's Miss Kamal doing? She's still, uh, she's still cooking locked up? Yeah. Yeah. She's a little locked up these days. I tell you what, the never has a worse show had a better theme. 
That's the no argument. Yeah, that's beyond the shadow of a doubt. Hey, Jebediah! Jebediah! And wasn't it Lee Mirror, was it, the former Miss America? She was the uh, secretary ace uh, hot piece. I don't know. I never watched the hot piece. Get out of here. How are you? Here we go. Big, big ending. Big climax. Oh! Oh, man. That is just uh, leaves me breathless. Towel. Huh? Yeah. Or at least a um, Mounty. paper towel. How's Bounty? Rosie, she's dead too. Damn it. Yeah. Poor Rosie. She's in a better she, place. She's probably mopping up what's left of Arafart. You know, it is the quicker picker upper. <laughs> 22 past 10 at 560 WQAM. We're just all screwed up here, man. Like Elvis was all shook up. We're all screwed up. Starting today at 10 o'clock, uh, 10.04, whatever the hell it was. I think 10.04.45, that's always a good sign. That guy was great before. <laughs> he was sensational. Mm-hmm. God, if we just had about 5 million like him. But like I was starting to say before, instead of talking to the same bozos every day, wouldn't it have been great, you know, if I would have had a real agent we had been on a real radio station been talking to like, you know, 100 different markets. He turns on in 46 different markets, but he didn't uh, get Bush defeated. See, there's something wrong with that. You failed, Howie. You failed. And you can bring on all the bull dykes you want and all the uh, boobs and all of that, but you failed in your main mission, man. And when I get to that story about what's going on with satellite radio, uh, people are going to say, uh-oh, uh-oh, oh, wait a minute, God. not so fast, yeah. And I, I had no idea. I just found that by accident. I just was checking out FMQB, which you can look up yourself if you want to get to the story before I get around to reading it. And you'll see, oh, my goodness. Didn't take them too much time before a bunch of uh, lunatics are starting to try to impose. And, and it's just a matter of time. You saw that some of those uh, ABC stations uh, uh, wouldn't carry Saving Private Ryan last night, including the Sinclair Group again, of course, those right wing. And, and pretty soon you'll have nothing but, uh, you know, Pat Robertson and uh, and Jerry Fallball and uh, Pat and uh, Jan Crotch on there 24-7. PTL, baby. That's right. And, of course, Fox News. Don't forget about them. Ah. Fox, where the F stands for fascism. 23 past 10 at 560 WCAM. We apologize for the spastic nature of this hour, but it's kind of like uh, we're we're in limbo, man. We're doing the old limbo rock with or without Chubby Checker. But then again, there's always... <laughs> oh. <laughs> there's always Barnaby Jones gets his man. I bet you I'm the only one who remembers uh, Bill Ross from Channel 7. He used, to be, he used to be one of the weather guys who was also the booth announcer. So he did all those promos for all those corny shows they used to carry before they uh, became the Fox affiliate. And also there was Dick Fennell on Channel 4, which is now Channel 6. Remember Dick Fennell? No. Nope. Yeah, he was one of the weather guys. I didn't watch news when I was a punk. Get out of here. Like Dick now. Fennell, he was also did all the voiceovers on Channel 4, which is now Channel 6, back in the Ralph Redneck days. It was Bob Weaver and Dick Fennell. And then it was Jim Brosmer. You remember Jim Brosmer? I do. But I don't remember well. the kiddie shows mostly. You got to count of that's because I was a kid. Yeah. So you remember... Um, and some graves on the uh, creature features. No, no, but Wayne Chandler. Chandler. Wayne Chandler, that's right. one. The Let's ask you again, is Wayne Ferris or Wayne Chandler still alive? I guess Wayne Chandler's dead. I like uh, Wayne Chandler. He was also a weather guy once in a while. He's a good guy. That's right, he was. I think I met Wayne Chandler once. He was a pretty good guy. That's probably why he's dead. The good people, you know, are the dead people. And the bastards, they live forever. Like Rick Sanchez. 1025 at 560 WQAM. Happy Friday to you. Happy uh, day after Veterans Day. A lot of dead people over there in the Middle East. You know, now's the time to save like never before at Armstrong, Fort of Homestead, because our good paisans over there got to clear out all those remaining 04s to make room for the 2005s. And as a result of this, you're going to save even more than usual on all remaining 04s in stock, ready for immediate delivery, if not sooner. And all the 05s are in and ready to roll out, too. Plus, for a limited time, get yourself 0% financing on any of the following. Explorers, Escapes, Focuses, Tauruses, and Mustangses. Certain restrictions apply. The lots at Armstrong, Florida Homestead are jammed like crazy, and with more of those O5s arriving every day, they're cutting prices even more to save you more cash. And Armstrong Ford continues to offer its lower customers more value than anybody else because when you buy your Ford there, you'll get their exclusive Tires and Batteries for Life program that is absolutely correct, Tires and Batteries for Life. So if you've been wanting a new car but been putting it off, wait not another day. David Rich and his staff at Armstrong Ford Homestead will guarantee you the best price. And don't forget, Armstrong Ford Homestead, locally owned and operated, they want you to be a customer for life so they'll treat you like family. And they will give you the best deal in town. I guarantee I'll bet you Greg's life on it. You won't get a better deal on a Ford anywhere. No bait and switch, no phony deals. All of this going on right now at Armstrong Ford of Homestead, and you'll find them right down the old Hershey Highway. They're at 30725 South Dixie Highway, just 20 minutes south of the 836. Check them on the wicked web, armstrongcars.com, and then drive a little bit. Save tons on that new Ford only at Armstrong Ford of Homestead. The Howard Stern Show. Neil Rogers, mornings and weekdays. And sports around the clock. Right. 
You call this big market radio? And now, another page from the audio diary of Martha Stewart. You may recall in my last entry, I was timid and treading lightly in my new surroundings. Well, all that has changed. I'm starting to feel more comfortable with each miserable day that passes, and so I can be my nasty, power-hungry self. The warden and I have reached an understanding. I do as I please, and I let her pretend to be in charge. You may be hearing some disturbing news about some apples that I picked illegally. I have since explained to the monosyllabic credence who patrol the grounds, rules do not apply to me. If I want to bake a pie after fighting off the unwanted sexual advances of overweight, mouth-breathing WNBA fans, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I've taught myself how to adapt and overcome. Why, just yesterday I had an altercation with Big Misty Lopez in the women's shower. Before my arrival, she was the big mama. We came to a mutual understanding after I ordered two weak-minded drones to blacken her eyes with my soap on a rope. That's all for now. I must go deal with heroin Holly, who made an offhanded comment about my crab apple jelly. I never realized how much pain a spork could bring to another human being. In truth, I never even heard of a spork. Fascinating. It looks like a spoon, but has the prongs of a fork and is the perfect instrument of disfigurement and torture. Toodles. 1031 at 560 WQAM. So I have another email from Norma Kent, who's on her way to get more pizza burgers. Okay. What an idiot. Just uh, go away, Norma, okay? Don't go away, Mag. Just go away and uh, continue playing fantasy baseball with your fantasy life and be a fantasy agent, which is exactly what you are. And don't be telling me about any more stale offers from Greg Reed about working uh, three days a week in the summertime and working four hours. See, I do work four hours, ten to two. But when you chop off most of the ten o'clock hour and some days like yesterday, all of it and a little bit of the eleven o'clock hour, that's not my doing. That's your doing when you enter into an illegal agreement, Greg. And if I had a real attorney, he'd have probably already sued your dumb ass. But at any rate, let's see, Jim Sarney writes, I'm trying to find stuff here because I don't want to, like, uh, blow the whole thing on that satellite radio story. It's right. a big story. Huh? Right. Don't you agree? It's a it's uh, major a development story, and not a good development either. And that's something we didn't see coming. Or something I saw it coming, but I didn't think it would take place this fast. But I guess it's kind of like a preemptory shot across the bow, as those uh, <laughs> legal nuts like to say. Let's fire a shot across the bow. <laughs> yeah, only crazy people say things like that. So Jim Sarney, speaking of crazy people, writes. We don't need to read this again later, even with all due respect to our fat friend Hank. It says. Hank Goldberg is having a great week. Nice going, Hopper. <laughs> sports, okay, that's enough. Sports Illustrated named Hank one of the nation's top 12 sports talk personalities a few days ago. And then Goldberg broke the day once that resignation Monday night, calling the uh, news and Ed Kaplan on the air, causing a tidal wave of media frenzy as newspapers and TV stations scramble to confirm the story. In the aftermath, Goldberg show is a must-listen every afternoon as the Dolphins' future plays out. <laughs> oh, man. What a nice suck job, Sarney. Wow, wow, wow. He doesn't say anything, though, about what station he was going to be on after the end of the year, though. Does he? No. I must have missed that. Because with the big headline there, which we appreciate very much for our good friend, the Humper, I don't see anything about what's going on with Hank's contract or if he's going to get suspended again for being a little bit too good and getting too much free publicity. And it wasn't even very jackass's column. You see, the fact that Sarney wrote that and not very jackass, that tells you right there, that didn't come from upper-level management. See what I mean? Right. If it would have been in very jackass, then you know somebody would have fed it to him. In other words, to try to suck around. Like that promo that we're running on here about Hank Goldberg breaks the story. Well, of course he does. He's done it all the time. He's been doing it for 100 years. But when he breaks the story they don't like, then they suspend him for six weeks. Very sad what's going on. And, of course, nobody in the market since they're all out of touch. I mean, Jika actually wrote that story spontaneously here a couple of weeks ago, which he never spoke to me or anybody that I know. But he just, uh, I guess he just kind of picked it up uh, out of the blue, so to speak. Out of the blue states. The there. Yeah. About this, because uh, th- th- this isn't working. It just is not, does not work for me. It doesn't work for George. It doesn't work for, well for Josh. He don't care because as long as he gets paid four bucks an hour, 350 whatever it is. Right? Hey, 375 Come on. 375 uh, He doesn't really care. But we care because it uh, creates a real problem for us and for our fine audience out there, which is why now uh, Greg Reed has reduced our audience to... Um, Reverend Jones, his boyfriend, uh, crazy Prozac Ron, and the little circle jerk Julio's out there who are busy writing phony letters signing P.D. Lenny's name to it. And that, that's, <laughs> basic, that's basically all we got now. 
because uh, he keeps yanking the audience around, jerking them around and jerking them around, and one day it's this and one day it's that. They haven't got any, without a scorecard and a pencil with a big eraser on it, they don't know what's going on. Like, even when, when the host doesn't even know what time the show starts. Right. Like, when I sit down here this morning, you tell me, oh, well, Howard's on tape for 10 o'clock today, and I'm thinking, you got to be kidding me. Based on what? We thought we had this thing down to a science now. I might even have to take a few more calls here before we get to this big satellite radio story. Which could, uh, this is a thing here, even though people say, well, that's only just one, uh, you know, well, you'll see. Because with the current censoring fascist climate in America today, with the kind of fascists we have on the FCC, and even with new members, will continue to have, believe you me, but look who's appointing them, uh, you can be damn sure. Any chance they get to censor anything you want to read, watch, listen to, they'll jump on it, they'll squeeze it, they'll covet it, they'll love it. Any chance they get. Because that's the new America now, man, where the F stands for fascism as an F-U. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. I'm a hardcore fan. I listen to you every time you come on. You can come on at 140, 150, 155. Now, now you're I'll talking, man. You. Now you're talking my language. All right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How you doing? Yeah, okay. You're an idiot. WQAM, hello. Ooh, this must be the call we've been waiting for. Right. I think it's for you. I'll have two pizza burgers and two medium cokes. Now, see, this piques my curiosity. Don't you want to hear who's on the other end? Absolutely. Somebody has obviously hooked us up. Which is always good. Yeah, always good getting hooked up. They're, they're not home. No. Now, Miss Kamal ain't answering. She's occupied at the moment. <laughs> Ocupado. She's an occupant. Rectum. WQAM, hello. Hey, what's going on? Yes, sir. Hey, Wayne Chandler is not dead. He's still chicken oh. and alive in Hollywood. Thank God. That's right. the best news I've heard right. since we sat down here. Love you, Neil. Where is, where is Wayne Chandler? He's living in Hollywood, actually, right off In of Hollywood, Florida? Florida? Hollywood, Florida. Love you, Wayne. Love you. <laughs> Thanks for the good news. Right. See, I, he's a good right. guy, Wayne Chandler. He was good on the air, and he did the mm -hmm. Kitty Show for a million years. Yes, he did, which I like. Skipper more. Up Chuck, he's still alive. He's doing them. Yes, uh, he is. He's doing geriatric radio over there. What what channel is he on? Uh, G F L A F T L. F one know. of those uh, geriatric stations. One of the cheap channels, eighty five thousand stations. Where they got like, uh, oh, guess who else is on that station? I believe. What the hell is her name? The one that used to be on the light bulb. Joyce Kaufman. Oh, oh, oh. she's oh, so Jewish, please. Joyce Kaufman. I remember that name. Come on, get with it, man. She was on with Norma Kent. Never heard And Miss, Mr. Ego and Nick right. Lawrence. Oh, yeah. And who's that other little twinkie, that quizling that's out with uh, with Mr. Ego? What's his name? Craig. Is that his name? The guy that Norm uh, talks about? Yeah. 567 <laughs> 0560. See, I've forgotten all about him. I do know he used to look pretty good once upon a time until he started speaking, you know. Sometimes you see people, they look pretty good. Hi, how are you? And when they start oh, that talking guy. like that. Is I... that a Brian Craig? Is that his name? Oh, no, that's his name. Brian, Brian Craig. Craig. I remember her. Yeah, him. It. Yeah. Wow. And then, of course, there's that big, fat uh, Jew attorney there, Richard Essen, who's always singing Essen, Mergay, and Essen, which, of course, means we're going to go eat. He's just a huge ton of, tub of crap. Another one of those right-wing Jews. Yeah, there's a lot of us. And what about the Jinsey James? Let's get the Jinsey James show back on. And who's the guy that died who used to do the show without the teeth, the dog racing show? The oh, yeah. used to be on. And, uh, I never Mo missed it. And Mofo used to be on there, too, I think. Mifo. What the hell was his name? Yeah, he, he did some shows. Don't you remember Larry King uh, raised some no. money to get him back on the air on cable? No. What the hell was his name? No. He, he actually used to do the show from uh, Flagler or Biscayne. Ken Malden would know. And he had no teeth. <laughs> He's the only guy I've ever seen on it. He's the, he's the governor's show in the third race to four dogs. Of, you know, what the hell is his name? Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you. You talk about a very strange marketplace. Then there's always Mickey the Great Dane. Right. Right? She's still alive. How are those Panthers doing, by the way? Anybody seen any good hockey this season? Oh! As a matter of fact, now that you mention that, now that may be one of the services I can do. I don't have any NHL. We've got the Central Hockey League there on Leafs TV, which shows you how desperate they are. Oh, look at this. The Chargers, of course, have taken it over. From Flyers and Devils, 2004 playoff last season. Numbers. There's Keith Primo on the bench. He still looks ugly. Good numbers he had earlier. He began his career with Detroit before he went to Hartford. Then yeah. Carolina, when that franchise moved, and now in Philly. Needham Wire. Play upwards of 10 minutes in that opening period. Who is this? Oh, it's so a deuce. ESPN crew. Worst play-by-play voice I've ever heard in my life. 
Or we could always put on some racing from uh, Woodbine would be good, some horse racing from last night. You want to get some of that on there? All right. In fact, it's one until the yet. first. One until the first race, and I can tell you the winner right now. Last night's first race. And by the way, Ian Fromowitz, I'm uh, happy you won a uh, race the other night, but I would like that thirty dollars horse. He, uh, he, Ian probably won't uh, respond to me anymore. You know, my good friend Ian after gave me two stiff horses earlier in the week. I don't bet out there anyway on the horses. Okay, I'm busy playing the slots like an old fag. Anyway, so Gregory writes this uh, fast, which we'll get to right at the top of the hour. I want to tease us a little bit about uh, Sirius and about satellite radio. And then there's this amazing story, should all radio be created equal, about the fact that already the... Oh, there's Randy Waples. Uh, is Randy going to win the first race? No, he won the second race last time. WQAM, hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm going to talk to Neil Rogers. Speaking, sir, this is he. Neil Rogers? Yes, I am. You're on, I'm on, we're all on something. Okay. Crack. I was watching the uh, Arafat uh, this morning. Arafat's still dying? He's dying uh, over there is what I'm hearing, yeah. Yeah, so they say. They got tired of waiting for him to officially die. They just stuck his ass in the ground. They got tired of it. Well, they're shooting They're shooting guns up in the air. Well, that's because they're practicing I felt like I was, in the Hialeah. Exactly, exactly. Don't they understand that bullets do come down? Yeah, what goes up must come down. That's right. Exactly. Anyways, that's crazy. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm glad you discovered that there's crazy people in the Middle East. Thanks for the bulletin, Pally. That's good. There's crazy people <laughs> like that in the Middle East. That's why he didn't have low Parkinson's or anything. Or a fart. It's just a, he was uh, had those trembling lips. All crazy people like <laughs> like that. Like the Pope. There's another one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here comes the first race. The great Frank Salib, who I think gets a little choked up during the call. This may not be the race, but he started like losing it last night. Okay. He's the best. You're the best, Frank. It's first race post time. At Woodbine. Or if you go inside, they got all these slot machines, all these old ladies and fags playing them. Under a recall, though. Up. Oh. As the field swung into the stretch, the horn was sounded and the recall lights were deep. Well, we don't have time to wait for that, Frank. Okay. So anyway, let's uh, just take a few more calls. I, I, I feel like uh, like a lost child, you know? Sometimes I feel like life is passing me by. Where's Bill Calder when, when we need him in? We're in limbo, baby, doing a limbo rock. Sometimes I feel myself. Well, I guess we're not playing sometimes I feel the part one. I guess we're not playing that. Sometimes I feel the Music. That's what we're going to be doing starting Monday, right? Why, why wait? Well, we got this whole new blue, uh, blue state, red state thing, and obviously the red states won. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's let's become part of the red states, all right? We'll be liked a lot better that way. All right. I got Kenny Rogers' greatest hits in the car. And we can uh, start talking some NASCAR crap and get reports from our good friend Joe Costello once mm -hmm. in a while when he doing the satellite thing. NASCAR, baby, that's where it's at. Dale Waltrip, we'll have him on once in a great while to confabulate. And then that Gordon Johncock from Hastings, Michigan. Yeah, Dick Trickle. Yeah, I'll get him on there, too. See, this George, man, you just, no wonder Greg hates you like poison. You are just an accident waiting to happen. What? Although the only problem is you don't wait. Forget about sports, okay? Sports is in our past. Sports is in the ancient, distant memory. We need to get country now. We need to get a hillbilly. We need to get a trailer trashy. That's what we need to get. Trailer Trash Radio. That's it. Now you're talking. <laughs> Crank that baby up. Well, yeah. That's Irish, but that's kind of well, like Irish rednecks. Same difference. Uh -huh. Just a little redder in the face. <laughs> where the where they drunk. came from. Like Tip O'Neill and all the other drunken Irishmen. Like Mike Disney, for example. WQAM, hello. How you doing, Neil? All right, Pally. Thanks for the plug, uh, but I, I'd like to get some royalty checks. Yeah, okay, great. WQAM, hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hey, Neil, please. Speaking. Neil, how are you? I have a great idea for the problem with Stearns when he leaves. Yeah. I want George in the morning. He does a great freaking job, man. Greg, we, we hate George. George like poison and doesn't even want him on doing three days a week in the summertime, even though he kicks ass in the summer every, every he, year. He, but he really? uh, he, you don't get it. I know that. He does a fine job. But the problem is that Greg doesn't like him because he's too good. Because he won't suck Greg's ass. That's the main reason, of course. And, of course, neither will I. So that's the way it is. I say let's put Maddie Bell and Gary Sarner on in the morning oh, show. That yeah. sounds like a winner to me, huh? Good in for that. Team him up there with uh, Ron Hershey Highway. Get him on there again with those great uh, 
drop-ins. He was doing all those great comedy bits he mm-hmm. did. Fresh new comedy. Yeah, fresh new comedy from Ron Hershey Highway, who Sonny Fox hates like poison, by the way. Nice choice, Sonny. You're right. I wonder why. And, you know, it just reminded me. Here's another uh, thing that we can't play anymore. It just dawned on me. Hi, this is Sonny Fox. I listen to Neil Rogers because I can hear the word. No, you can't. No, you can't. <laughs> Not anymore. Hi, this is Sonny Fox. I listen to Neil Rogers because I can hear the word. And that's it. So you can't even come back to that fast time. He says it so fast. Well, that's it. That goes to show you how uh, we've become censored and uh, tartered and tattered, and uh, we're done. The whole radio business. Not just uh, commercial radio, the way you know. You just wait another few minutes till 11 o'clock when I give you that story. Once we get all the other business out of the way, the beaded curtain and the pole and this pole and that pole and the pole position with Gordon Johncock and all that other stuff. And uh, don't forget Jeff Gordon. A lot of Gordons in there, you know? All over Canada, they always call him Gord. It's enough to drive you off your gourd. Well, what, what is that? I don't know anybody in America who's called gourd. Do you? No. Gordon. You know. But here it's gourd. In fact, even Bud Lynch, the one-armed Venus de Milo guy. In fact, he's still, I think, doing a PA in Detroit at uh, Joe Louis Arena. The hockey games. But uh, he used to be one of the play-by-play guys for the Red Wings 100 years ago. And he used to call Gordy Howe, Gord Howe. And I thought, what what is that? Gord Howe? Nobody else used to say by, that. By was the, the great, great. Even you know Gordy Howe, right? Who? Yeah. Number nine. Who's number six? Oh, I watched a little Bullwinkle last night. Still good? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe the first disc isn't all that good. I don't want to get Brian upset because the, the intentions were great. I enjoyed The Prisoner a lot more. I'm not saying that kiss your ass because who needs that? But uh, No, it was, it was uh, I don't know, maybe it was just in, in, in its own time it was great. But it was just it was disappointing. It was some of the early ones, I guess. Maybe they just weren't all that funny. Do you know that William Conrad did some of the voices on there? No, I did not. He was the announcer on there, Bill Conrad. How do you like that? And Edward Everett Horton on the Fractured Fury uh, I remember him, yeah. That, well, that wasn't too bad. The Rapunzel one. That Fractured was Fury cute. Tales were great. That was my favorite thing about the uh, Bowling Show. <laughs> that was Edward Everett Horton, who was just uh, legendary. That's much Let's see. Chandler and Ferris both improving. What is this? Oh, it's an old story. I thought it was Oh, it's an old story from 1984. Someone found it. Well, now, now, see, that's why I get them confused, because mm-hmm. I remember this story. Mm-hmm. From how many years ago? 20. About 30, man. No, 20. Uh, from the Herald, no less. So it might have been true, but I doubt it. Veteran television personalities Wayne Chandler and Wayne Ferris, both hospitalized December 8th, this is 84, in critical condition, are improving, says Steve Boyer, Channel 7 assignment editor, Chandler, WSBN's weekend weatherman. See, I told you he did the weather on there in the weekend, didn't I, Wayne Chandler? Right. Was seriously injured in a head-on crash, taken North Miami General Hospital, where he's now listed in serious but stable condition. And the good news is, they stitched him up five different places, and he's still alive in Hollywood, no less. Well, as close, to, as, close as it is to be possible living in Hollywood. Ferris, who left Channel 7 in January to retire later, joined Bonita Springs radio station WEVU Channel 26 as Vice, and then the story ends right there. So he uh, also got in some kind of a... Now, I don't know if Wayne Ferris is still alive. Although the headline here says Chandler and Ferris both improving. Now, that was 20 years ago, but if they got the luck of uh, Yasser Arafat, they could, you know, see around another 50, 60 years. I don't know. Wayne Ferris left me kind of limp. He was okay. But Bill Ross, I bet you he's dead. He was a big fat guy, and the fat guys, you know what happens to them, they yes, die. I do. You don't remember Bill Ross? No. I bet you somebody remembers big fat Bill Ross. See, everybody's always uh, like a weekend weather guy or like a backup weather guy, and everybody I know that's been in town a long time remembers Dick Fennell on Channel 4. He had kind of like a torpy voice like Tommy in production. He kind of talked like that, kind of like Geldy a little bit, <laughs> Dick Fennell. But I liked Dick Fennell. He was good. Kind of felt comfortable with that old Channel 4 crowd, you know, Weaver and Raven and Ralph Redneck. Never tell you the time I called Ralph Rennick after uh, one of his shows? No. He did an editorial. Well, he used to do an editorial. Good night, and may the good news be yours. And he was very ponderous, talked like he was on, like a like a 45 RPM record at about 37. Like he was off speed a little bit. But anyway, I called him up. It was an editorial he did about, uh, I don't know, something about those damn Cubans or something like that. And I ca- actually called a newsroom at Channel 4, and I got him on the phone, because he, he uh, listened to me. Mm-hmm. Now, who the hell, I guess I was on WS News back in those days when I was really popular with the old crowd. Now they hate me like poison, all the old farts, and now I'm one of them, so ha-ha, <laughs> too bad. Although most of the old farts from those days, they're pushing up daisies. What a shame. Mm-hmm. My audience. <laughs> and uh, I congratulate him. I said, great job, Ron. He, uh, he was very uh, appreciative. He was uh, very nice, very friendly. Of course, he was sober at the time. Now, I see, I shouldn't say that. There are people who have been known, like you mentioned our friend Ranieri before, Mike, you know, he worked for uh, Disney Broadcasting, so, uh, Mike Disney Cox Broadcasting, so as a result, he used to have that little flask in right. his pocket. We all cope in our own way. 
That is correct. And I, I, I like Winery. He was a good guy. He was a good guy. He, he was misunderstood. A lot of people thought he was like, uh, I don't know, kind of like uh, bizarre or like, uh, I, I don't know how to describe it. You know what I mean? He, he, was, he was unusual. But then again, aren't we all in this business? Yep. But he was a good guy. And you recall the time he called in a couple of times uh, mm-hmm. on a show on his station? Sure. Back in the good old day before Greg started destroying our lives? Come to QAM. Hello. Hi. I'm, uh, hello? Yes, sir. Neil, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great, man. The sun is shining. It's like, uh, you know what the temperature in Toronto is right now? About 30, man. That's exactly what it is. It's going to be 40 today. What's not to like, man? It's nice and crisp. That's, that's beautiful, man. Makes you feel beautiful. like the blood is really flowing in your vein. Absolutely. <laughs> Nothing like it in the whole world. You are Absolutely. the sun, man. You right. are the sun. Yeah. Um, hey, uh, I'm, a corporate, I'm a corporate time-stealing weasel. I wanted to be put on hold so I could listen to the show. Oh, okay. <laughs> sure, why not? I put that oh, yeah. guy on hold. What's wrong with that? Corporate time-stealing. Now he's stealing the Mad Dog's line. All right. I love the Mad Dog, but that's the one thing that he says that just, uh, I don't know, drives me up the wall. Oh, now, what's the deal on here? Because it still says in my schedule, Jim Manage at Publix today. Oh, well, right? What's up? the deal on that? We have no reason to doubt that. But uh, Publix, where? There's 85,000 Publix hey. in all over South Florida, huh? you got two hours to find the right one. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, man, that Clarence and Muff, they, they are as useless as, uh, as gigantic breasts on a ballpoint pen. They're useless. Christ almighty. Jim Mandich said Publix my ass. Now, is he going to be in the produce department? Maybe he'll be in the uh, meat department. Or oh, maybe nice. he'll be hanging out near the fresh fruit. I don't know. But anyway, Mad, uh, Mad Dog at 2 at Publix, it says here. Hank at, and oh, and Eddie K at Calder at four. Punching her guts out. That'll be good. I had the two in the first race, and the one ran into him, and the, uh, the, the three missed the start. Sure, racing to me is about as exciting as uh, porridge. Uh, Orlando Alzagiri, the big uh, oh! at seven, because we got nobody else to put on there. And, and Eddie K on his own show at ten. Eddie's working double duty today. I hope he doesn't plunge too bad at Calder this afternoon. And, of course, once we get those slots in there at Calder and the other tracks, then the purses are going to go way up and the quality of racing will go way up and everything will be just, uh, it'll be really a positive thing. A win-win situation and we'll get that money for education. It's going to be a beautiful thing. Isn't that great? See, I feel like we actually accomplished a little something there. It reminds me, the last time we got anything done was when we beat that, um, remember they wanted to put that uh, transportation tax in Dade County? And your right. friend Dave Slater got that big puffed up ego and started running for office a million times and all that. But uh, we did some good stuff back then. So once in a great while, we accomplished a little bit something, but I'm really pissed off that Howard Stern didn't get uh, George Bushby, which he kept promising us, you know. If Howard is a little more concerned about getting the job done than his own ego, I think uh, the world would be a better place in which to live. I could be wrong about that. WQAM, hello. Hello, Neil. Yes. Okay, so you straight right. along. WQAM, hello. Hey, I'm calling about Bill Ross and uh, Wayne's and Wayne's. Okay, I'm listening. Um... Bill Ross has passed away. Oh. Wayne Chandler, although he recovered from his accident, walked with a severe limp, and um, last time I heard he was still alive, and Wayne Ferris did pass away. Wayne Ferris is dead. Yes, he is. Well, you're, you're right on the, the Channel 7 meter there. You got, it, uh, you got your thumb Well, on. I was there from 82 to 94. Really? You worked there? Yes, sir. What did you do there? I was an engineer. Oh. Then you must have known all these people. Yeah, I did the audio in the morning for the news show with Bill and... Uh, Bill Ross when he worked with Denise White, uh, right? Which is about one of the one of the few people from Seven that actually showed up at the funeral. Now, who else? Who else was uh, at Channel Seven back in those days? Who was? The, who were the news people? Ooh, um, uh, Steve Rondonero, Sally Smith. Steve Rondonero, oh my God! Rondon. Yeah, he. Last time I heard, he was in um, and Lee Webb. He's on Christian. He's on um, Pax. Wow. He was a sports guy. Then he turned to Christ. He failed. Yes, he did. Okay, Jesus well. Christ. Thanks for the good news, Pally. Yes, sir. And say hi to all our good friends, the ones who are still alive at Channel 7. Not too many of them. Well, now they got all those matacones with cheese, you know. Oh, whatever happened to the speaking of that, whatever happened to little Brian Andrews, that butterfly? Where the hell did she wind up? I thought she was going to see uh, somewhere in New York. Remember that? Yeah. You know, Aaron's got a great show. Yeah, uh-huh. Last thing we heard uh, Brian Andrews say to Adam was... Hey, boy, what's that in your mouth? Remember that? And by the way, Adam's still ain't interested, Brian. Was that Brian that had the hots for Adam, or was that uh, Dan Stewart? Both. Oh, both of them, really. How's Dan doing? Oh, we're fine. You're an idiot, Dan. And Josh Moore would like to beat the crap out of you, and believe me, could, with one finger, with both hands tied behind his back, okay? Like to give you a karate chop to the head, you idiot. That was so bad that day. Why did you bring him in? Who? 
Ben Stewart. Today he was trying to drag a oh, public in downtown Fort Lauderdale. Well, that's not exactly what I call a very good uh, description of where. Like See, this is your own handwriting. Or something like that. Well, huh? somebody came in and told me, and I wrote it down and sent it. Who came in and told you? Uh, oh, well, so what the hell does he know? He's probably hanging around the fresh fruit department. God, what's wrong with you? So uh, Mad Dog's going to be doing it, and then why is that? Well, what is, uh, I mean, I see it on the schedule, and immediately coming to my mind is one question. Why? Yeah, why is Mad Dog, know. our sports ace, doing a show at uh, Publix? I mean, we, I love Publix, don't get me wrong, although it's certainly no Dominion. And it's definitely no Wegmans. Boy, do I love Wegmans. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hop on that ferry, although I think they stopped running that thing. That ferry. You know the one that goes yeah. across Lake Ontario? No. They had all kinds of... Yeah, they opened... They started a ferry from Toronto to Rochester. Canadian back. ferry? A Canadian ferry. Oh, we got so many. <laughs> wow. Holy moly. I mean, even I can't uh, quite relate to this. But, no, seriously, they had this uh, ship that was running back and forth uh, across the lake. It's not... I guess it's like an hour and a half or something like that. And uh, it uh, they had all kinds of problems with it, and then the uh, ship itself had a problem. I don't know whether that thing is still going. And, of course, part of the problem was a lot of people from Rochester wanted to come here, but who from Toronto wants to go to Rochester? What are we going to do there, smell the lilacs? Huh? What are you going to do there? With all due respect to the uh, city in which I was born in Strong Memorial Hospital, November 5, 1942. Huh? Do you know I got a birthday card from my rich aunt? No money in it, though. I was going to ask. No, and now she knows I'm making a few bucks. She's, uh, that's the same one that was charging my mother uh, rent. Oh, by the way, I sold my uh, mother's place. Aren't yeah. you excited about that? Well, you told me so. And I, I, never went, I never went in there again after she died. And I, I, don't, I mean, I wanted to, but I have these uh, people, who I, these friends of mine who think I'm an emotional cripple or something. I wouldn't have faced me in the least bit. What well, would have been the point? I guess they didn't want to see me dance on the carpet or something I like that. I don't you know. didn't want to rifle through her tchotchke see if there was anything good in there? They already did that. I, I, don't, I don't know what they found. Your old huh? dog's collar? I, well, somebody mentioned something about a butt plug. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Okay, 10.56, we killed this first hour. Nice job, Neil. I, it's like we just sat down, you know what? I was a little bit worried when you told me that uh, bad news about Stern being off today and doing a taped show. Well, no, this, look, it doesn't work. Okay, it doesn't work for me. In fact, I think I'm going to call up Tom Jicka one of these days very soon, and really, I'm going to unload all the real truth about what's going on here in this radio station because it's a freaking nightmare, and good people are getting abused and used and screwed, and there are all these conflicting deals being made. I think pretty soon we're going to have to start broadcasting in stereo. I'm serious. We're going to have to have, like, two shows on simultaneously because Greg got so many contracts with so many different people, in addition to which, since Stern keeps threatening he's going to bail out any day anyway, what's the point, right? Well, what's it all about, Alfie? Well, let's get Alfie on. He's dead. Is Alfie dead? Who? See, that goes to show you what a punk you are. Alfie. He used to be on WKT. He used to be Mickey Dane's beard or whatever that deal oh, was. Never heard of Alfie. Him. Don't know Alfie? Uh -uh. You know, IRS tax problems have a way of ruining all the aspects of your life. Boy, there's nothing worse than the old IRS. They take a toll on you financially, physically, emotionally. You can never really forget about those IRS problems. Every morning when you wake up in a cold sweat, you're like in a total panic, and rightfully so. CPA Jeannie Buckwald and the Buckwald Tax Firm can help end your IRS problems forever and give you back peace of mind. That's why other top CPA and law firms refer their clients to the Buckwald Tax Firm when they have IRS problems. Why not avoid potential criminal prosecution? Get all your unfiled tax returns prepared, even if you lost all your records. Now, maybe you've got an IRS lien or a wage levy, as in I've been working on the levy. Remember that? No. I think that was a Jewish song. Is it or a levy? Maybe you owe payroll taxes and penalties. Maybe you want to settle for thousands less than you owe or just need time to pay. Whatever your IRS deal is, the Buckwald Tax Firm will help you out. They offer a free initial consultation, affordable and guaranteed fees, and immediate relief from IRS harassment. And best of all, you don't have to go to those pain in the ass IRS meetings because the Buckwald Tax Firm handles all the meetings and discussions. You don't even have to get involved. So whether you owe a thousand, ten thousand, a million bucks in IRS taxes, whatever it is, the Buckwald Tax Firm can help you. Call them today, 954 Five seven five twenty eight hundred. That's nine five four five seven five twenty eight hundred for a free consultation, or you can visit them on the web at irsfreedom.com and stop waking up in a cold sweat with the IRS hanging over your ass every day. Call them today. There's no obligation. Get the monkey off your back. Nine five four five seven five twenty eight hundred. You're listening to Neil Rogers on five sixty QAM. Friday, you bastard. 
Pull the fat revolting box, we don't got no civil rights. We are painted near and far, with no way to war in sight. Look at Bush and Cheney smile, when they both should be on trial. Only democracy, where are you? We believe, corporate TV, embrace religious love of my sea. But you see, John Kelly, look too much like Frank Quinn, that's why he didn't win. Our economy's in hot, as the Saudis hike the price. If you can't afford insurance, then just go ahead and die. Now we have a new war thrive, led by a retard, Jesus Christ. The democracy, where are you? Okay, it's 11.03, boys and girls. If you're just doing it now, thinking the show started at 11 today, boy, did you miss the first hour or what? Oh, man. Because uh, uh, Stern was on tape today because he had the day off for whatever reason. We didn't get the day off. But then again, we're not big shots like that, you know? Right? Right. Not yet. So we didn't get the day off. So as a result, from 10.04 until uh, 11 o'clock, we filled very well, by the way. We had some tremendous calls. In fact, I would say the calls we had in that hour were a hell of a lot better than what we had yesterday. See, you didn't remind me yesterday was a holiday. Sorry, I forgot. So what we had were the, um, the the miserable, lifeless shut-ins yesterday. Those are the ones that called over and over and over again. And uh, we'll hear from some of them again today. We already did. As a matter of fact, your boyfriend, Reverend Jones, who will be murdered next time I come back to town, by the way. I have his address. Uh -huh. Oh, do you really? What's his well, address? On it. No, I don't have it on me. Oh, you will. Oh, you do have it. Good. And yeah, we're going to start publicizing him, okay? In fact, we're going to get him beat to a bloody pulp because he's just so far over the top. And his boyfriend, too. Yesterday's poll, 1,940 votes. We're trying to figure out this blue state, red state thing, and uh, this poll proved absolutely nothing. Although we nearly got 2,000 votes on it. Right? So it proved we can get a lot of votes. 1,944, where are you originally from? Blue state, 950. Living and breathing people like Rochester, New York, where they got the lilacs and Cobbs Hill and the 12 Corners and Monroe Avenue, and they got uh, nothing else. Blue state, 950. Red State 626. Whatever happened to um, Vic and Irv's, by the way? I give Are up. they still here in Fort Lauderdale? Remember Vic and Irv's originally from Rochester? We had right. them as a sponsor briefly. In but fact, right. I, can th I think of a lot of people, whatever happened to. Of course, we got a lot of liars in there like Gary Sarner and Todd Dreck, you know. Red State 626. Uh, Cuba, 110. 110 people who listen to this show. Well, that's like a little slice of it, percentage-wise. That's... Uh, Five and a half percent of this audience are from were originally from Cuba. Cuba, like you, like me or other Latin America. One hundred and nine, which covers a lot of territory from Mexico to Guatemala to Panama to uh, Peru to uh, Brazil, Venezuela, Honduras, right? Nicaragua, sure. Nicaragua. Whatever happened to Isabel de Casada? Come on. I just like saying that. Oh, yeah. And that's the way she used to say it, too, just to piss off all of us Anglos, <laughs> and she accomplished that. He's about like a sada. Just and another one Anglos was right. a Kid Curry's ex-wife with a big ass, Anna a squeak. She's another one who used to talk Spanglish baby talk. Luckily, we don't have too much going on anymore. Let's see. Now, what does this say? Visit this site, London Daily Con, and read the article alert. It's unbelievable. Uh, what, and what is it about? It says, yeah, you uh, made a note on here. You read it. It's a, uh, a little article written by a guy that tried to fly into the United States from Brazil or something like that. A uh -huh. vegetarian, a uh, engineer, a businessman, an upstanding citizen, and what happened to him, his accounting of it. Yeah. It's interesting, to, you know, for uh, during a break, give it a look, see if it's worth it. Okay, I'll put that over there. I'll put it in my pile of uh, during a break, take a peek at this. Let's see. Uh, other Latin America 109. Europe 74. We've got 74 people from Europe. I wonder how many of them smell good. Uh, Canada, 54. 54 Canadians, eh? And there uh, are 51. And Asia, 24 of 1953 uh, people that uh, logged in. Here's today's poll before we do the, or should we do the bead curtain first? See, I'm so thrown off by this whole thing this morning starting at 10.04. That was crap. That was pure, unadulterated crap is what it was. Pure, Un adulterated crap. Gina Lee Nolan is our beaded curtain chick today. She was born November 29. Uh, which means she's got a birthday coming up. How do you like that? It's your birthday. It's your birthday. Let's uh, play a little for Gina Lee. What do you say, huh? All right. Gina Lee uh, Nolan, that makes her 33 uh, coming up on the 29th. Gave Starbucks gift cards to her wedding guests. Isn't that nice? Aw. Isn't that sweet? Anyway, she, uh, she looks pretty good to me. She looks pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. She's in uh, Baywatch, Hawaiian Wedding, the TV movie. The Flunky, Sheena, TV series Sheena. 
Was that from the Messina Alps? No. Uh, the Underground Comedy Movie. Baywatch, White Thunder in a gla at Glacier Bay. Oh, she was in Baywatch the series. Mm -hmm. Gina Lee Nolan. I don't remember her. Airheads. I remember what's his name? Uh, Omelet, whatever his name was. That little uh, Billy uh, Billy uh, Wonky. Willy Wonka. No, what was his name? Billy uh, Warlock. Warlock. How come you remember that, George? Oh, you know. The Great American Celebrity Spelling Bee. Oh, she's been in a lot of stuff. Look at that. G Foria, Miss Universe Pageant. That's incredible. MTV Europe Music Awards, uh, Rock and Roll, Rock and Jock Basketball, The Price is Right. What, what does that mean? The Price is Right, 1972. She was like one year old. What, what does that mean? I don't understand that. And a whole, just tons of stuff. Something about the, the Sharon Osbourne show. Also on with Howard Stern. Look at that. So there you go. Gina Lee Nolan. Take a picture you like it. Or if you don't like it, you're probably a fag. Okay, here's the deal. Have I got everything? Oh, here's today's poll. Oh, we've done this one before, but I'm in such a sour mood the last couple of days, but this is a radio station and a whole operation the way things are going. That See, I would say it's for the South Florida audience. They have to vent and they're frustrated and they're angry after the election, which is a lot of people are. But uh, we've done this in various forms. Um, where, where is it? Oh, here it is. The radio, TV, or movie celebrity you hate the most, and underline hate, not dislike, but hate, Radio, TV, or movie celebrity, it can be anybody. It can be us, it can be anybody you want, I don't care. And I didn't have any names on here originally when I uh, made this out, but I saw on King last night, I was channel surfing, and I was on there for like two seconds, Dr. Phil. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite people, Dr. Sure. Phil. Larry, you're such an ass sucker, man. You're disgusting, you're grotesque. It's a miracle his lips don't pop off. <laughs> and Bill O'Reilly, those are the two I put on Ooh, there for I starter. Wanted, I wanted Bill O'Reilly. Well, there you go. Dr. Phil and Bill O'Reilly. And I'm sure the audience will have many, many more to add. Radio, TV, movies. Now. Now? WQAM, hello. WQAM, hello. Neil. Yes, sir. I've had just about enough of that crap. <laughs> okay, Mike. There's Mike calling from the other side. We could play that. In honor of our close friend, Mike Ranieri, who was a good guy, one of the really, uh, here it is. I'm getting a little tired of that crap, I can tell you right now. <laughs> he was great. He was a one in a, zillion, a trillion. WQAM, hello. No. And you know, they screwed him over there, too. Mm -hmm. See, the good people in this business, if you stick around long enough, which he did, you wind up getting screwed real bad. Although, uh, you know what it reminds me of? It's like it's like Mr. H with uh, with the... Uh, this whole wants that deal. The guy has a horrible season. He stinks the joint out. Everybody despises him. And he, he signs him for two more years and then uh, cans him in midseason after another disaster that anybody, a blind man, could have predicted it. And the same with Veneri. They just signed him another year. And then Bob Green calls me in that one morning. Uh, I, did, I made a choice. I'm going to let Mike go. We're going to let Mike go. And then they put on that great Chuck Meyer news show with those great phone interviews. Oh, right. boy. Which would have succeeded if it wouldn't have been for me, if I'd have just That's supported right. that show. Yeah, a lot of work went into yeah, that show. Forget about the fact it was boring and it sucked. WQAM, hello. Hey. Yes, sir. Hey, how you doing? All right. Yeah, I got one for your phone. Yep. Rush Limbaugh. All right. Good choice, pal. He'll get a lot of votes. <laughs> Pill Pop and Rush. Yeah, let's get a lot of names on this poll, okay? So over the weekend, you can look on there and go, ah, yeah, I hate all those people. I hate everybody. Because after this election, man, after this thing got stolen, and you know who let us down was Stern. Howard Stern was going to make sure Kerry got elected. Didn't do it, Howie. You're too busy worrying about yourself, man, not about the human race. That's very sad. WQAM, hello. Yeah, I got one for you, Neil. Yes, sir. Bill Kamal. Miss Kamal, okay. <laughs> Bill Kamal, as if she don't have enough problems. Miss Kamal. Weather Ferry Jr. Not no more. See, she got all that exposure during the uh, hurricanes. <laughs> WQAM, hello. Hi. WQAM, hello. I want to talk to Neil. Speaking. Neil. Yeah. How's it going? I've been well, you sound so depressed about me. I need your stone off your ass. You're depressed. What is it? <laughs> I've been listening to you forever, man. Right. Since you've been with the bird. I just wanted to know where the about 30 man came from and if you could play that for me. Well, we'll do it right after the break. How's Sounds that? good, man. Thanks a lot. Put your ear to it, okay? We'll Stick do. right on it. All right. Oh. And the radio, too. I like these callers today. You know, even Crazy Ron sounded like real enthused, didn't he? Ah! <coughs> broke up a little bit. Huh? Like he yeah, broke he sounds up. really perky today. Wait till you blow his brains out. Then he'll really uh, perk up a little. I can't wait for that day. Let me know what the... T I'd like to come down and witness that myself. Of course, blowing his brains out would be kind of difficult. You wouldn't know where to shoot it. You know, maybe... Rectum! 
Twelve minutes after eleven at five sixty WQAM. All you our horse racing and poker players out there, fans. See if Steve Wolf keeps printing this any smaller, I'm going to have to have like the Mount Pal- Palomar telescope to read this thing. This copy. Pompano Park Racing and Poker is just the gambling action you're looking for, located just a half a mile from both I-95 and the Florida Turnpike. Pompano Park is easy to get to no matter where you are, and best of all, Pompano Park continues to give you free admission, free general parking every day. What's not to like? Live Harness Racing in the Poker Room is open three nights a week, now every fr- Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, like tonight. Poker starts at noon and goes on till midnight, and live racing gets underway those three nights, 7.25 p.m., including tonight. Every Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, the Poker Room features tournament action with special Texas Hold'em and seven-card stud tournaments starting at noon. Don't miss out on $1 night Wednesdays when draft beer, soda, hot dogs, and lots more, just a buck apiece, starting at 6 p.m. Pompano Harness is also open every day, seven days a week, for simulcasting, the best in harness, thoroughbred, highlight from all across North America, for you to watch and plunge your guts on. I wouldn't be surprised if they're still showing replays from Woodbine from last night, you know I'm at the wire in the early sprint. Momentous Mag is lined up in third. Right, so in fact, you can watch and plunge on Woodbine, too, I believe. Pompano Park, with that simulcasting every day, seven days a week. And best of all, there are only 36,000 minutes left until the first free spaghetti dinner night on Monday, December 6th. Are you ready to your sleeve, please? The bank downstairs free? was just robbed. The what? You know, the bank downstairs in the lobby of our building was just robbed. The, uh, yeah, it's right not a bank. It's a um, credit union. Credit union. Was, was just it robbed? robbed? Yeah. Oh, they're probably on the way up. throw that in there in the middle of the spot there. Okay. Pompano Park, a block south of Atlantic Boulevard and Powerline Road. Call 954-972-2000 for the current racing schedule. Or on the web, it's pompanopark.com. Horsepower, you can plunge your guts on. You're listening to Neil Rogers exclusively on 560. Rogers. Happiness. Peace. A sense of well-being, a sense voice. of self-worth. Well, it comes from the inside out. It doesn't come from the outside in. Dr. Phil drives me up a wall. There's no substance there at all. Takes his metaphors that don't you look damn thing. Dr. Phil brain it with a wall. He's a mister know it all. Never want to be. What makes you think that you do have the right to judge him for gaining a few pounds? What are you doing buying into it, you idiot? If you give him folks high fives while he screams at poor housewives about eating more than any human should. Dr. Bill Breeze just bagging down. You're a freaking circus clown. Try to handle things like your friend Oprah Wood. That, that's crazy. Dr. Phil Stop. Retire, go away. Dr. Phil Stop. Just leave and take your son, Jay. Oh, look who's off to the races in our pool. What a shock, huh? They hit him like poison, baby. In fact, maybe Wilma should have given him some arsenic without the old lace. Drug Rush Limbaugh, man. He is uh, off to the races on that. Which TV, radio, or movie celebrity you hate the most? Hate, despise. See, Bill O'Reilly to me, and again, I can only speak personally because I don't watch Fox. He's uh, small potatoes. He's uh, much ado about nothing. He's just a big bag of wind. He rubs me the wrong way. That's no, no, I can't stand him, him but, uh, but I, don't, I don't watch him. I don't pay any attention. I think he's highly overrated. And not nearly as many people would be talking about Bill O'Reilly were it not for the fixation of Al Franken with the Bill O'Reilly. See, if, if, if Al Franken would have worked harder on uh, defeating George Bush as opposed to showing everybody that Bill O'Reilly's a, uh, a phone uh, sex, uh, uh, who cares? He, he, he's just, uh, and, and take a look at the radio ratings. He's, he didn't even show up in his last book. Oh! He's got an 0.0 now, O'Reilly. It's really tearing Russia's audience to pieces, not. Anyway, let's get to the important story. I've stalled off long enough now. Yesterday at the end of the show, I had this fax from Gregory and Coral Springs, who is beyond chronic. I mean, just uh, obsessive. Means well, but, bop, 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 you know. Dear Mr. R., Forget serious. XM has three times the subscriber base. They're now, they now feature Opie and Anthony on a $1.95 a month premium channel. 
You could make an awesome addition and create a radio blockbuster. Before you say no, remember you once told me that pay radio would never work. Yeah, I told you that before we realized that was long before this whole chilling thing with the uh, Janet Jackson booby and with all the uh, censorship that, and we uh, had all of our bits taken away. You can't say crap and make fart sounds. Yeah. And you know something? It, it would never have worked. I mean, it would be some people with it, and some people have already bought it. A lot of people are buying an anticipation of Stern going on and on Sirius, for example. And Opie and Anthony would still be on, as a matter of fact. We're not for all this uh, censoring uh, right-wing crap that's going on. But anyway, it says, Now I have two XM radios, and many of my friends have them at home in their cars in their offices, says Gregory and Coral Springs. Well, based on the fact that my agent is a dunderhead, a bonehead, who's busy ordering pizza burgers, uh, I'm never going to be on Sirius or XM or anything, ex except this uh, godforsaken AM station. Now, that's it. Two years or less to go, and that's it. Greg. Gregory. Or Greg. But here's the important story that just came in. Just coincidentally, Greg may have been a little bit psychic there without realizing it. Okay, wait till you hear this, Gregory and Coral Springs and everybody else. Should all radio be created equal? It's on FMQB, which is an in industry a website. Saul Levine's, Saul Levine, oh boy, oh, hey. oh brother. Saul Levine's Mount Wilson FM broadcasters has petitioned the FCC to include an indecency provision in the rules that govern satellite radio. I wonder if Murray Levine, didn't he die? Don't know. Oh, poor Murray, he was a good guy. Paxton screwed him over bad. Levine's argument is that satellite radio is not heard exclusively by subscribers and that it should be subject to the same rules as terrestrial radio. I tell you what screwed him over real bad was that Ronna Ratfink Wolf, man. What a bitch he is. The key is to have a level playing field, Levine told FMQB. The FCC has the authority to regulate satellite radio. In fact, already does regulate it in two respects. The EEO requirements that apply to radio stations also apply to satellite radio, and the rules on political broadcasts also apply to both. The FCC said back in 1997 that when it authorized satellite radio, they would revisit at a later time additional regulations. Levine noted that he's not trying to curb Howard Stern or curb anybody. We're just saying that whatever rules apply to us should apply to them, too. He continued, their defense is that they are 100% subscription, and therefore only people who want to hear obscene language will hear it, but they're not 100% subscription. <coughs> they make it available to car rentals without any charge, and there are no controls on it. Families rent cars, and they can pick it up. It's a misconception that satellite radio is subscription radio. It's not true. The FCC said they can sell advertising or have subscriptions. They can do either. So it's not subscription only. It's not 100% commercial free. It's going to be available to minors. So the bottom line is we're not trying to impose any censorship on satellite radio that isn't already there on terrestrial radio. You see where this is going? Mm -hmm. Levine's petition was filed November 5th on my birthday, no less, even adding insult to injury, and asked that the FCC open a notice of proposed rulemaking that would mandate that no satcaster shall transmit any material which is obscene and that indecent material should be prohibited between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m., just as it is on terrestrial radio. It could take three months to a year before the FCC will rule out, rule out or act on the petition being sent. So they've already got the uh, balls rolling. How do you like that? Mm -hmm. They've already got the ball rolling, so they can censor this. And then, of course, once they do that, then they'll move on to cable TV, which they've already indicated they're, they're hot to trot for that. They want to censor everything, man, these fascists. So wouldn't this be a slap in the face? After Stern makes this big song today and said, oh, he's going to Sirius, and he made the big uh, uh, dog and pony show out of it and the big announcement and uh, you know, all this other. And uh, wouldn't that be something if he can't uh, do or say anymore? And, uh, and if they have to wind up dumping it all out like they do now on uh, terrestrial radio? Wouldn't that be something? That'd be something. But it looks like that's the direction things are going. I would be shocked if this fails to go through. Because when you got the Sam Brownbacks of the universe and all the other, and of course you saw the Democrats roll over and play dead, you know, John Kerry and John Edwards and Ted Kennedy and Chris Dodd, all of these other ballsy liberals, they just roll over and play dead because nobody wants to be seen as being on the side of defending indecency. Russ Feingold, Democrat from Wisconsin, he was the only one in the right. Senate. They voted against it. He's and then when they took it to the House of Representatives, this indecency of uh, finding $80 trillion every time you fart on the air, it's like, uh, oh, 391 to 22 was the vote or something like that. Nobody up there has got any balls in D.C. That's why Bush is in again. Because the rest of them are a bunch of spineless cowards. Like that silly-ass, bald-headed geek James Carville that sits there on Crossfire every day. Like, uh, now all he does is sit in the chair and, and he shakes himself. A little, ah, 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 ah. He doesn't even know what to say anymore because he's such an idiot. And it's pretty obvious from all the articles I'm reading that it was Carville and Bob Shrum and the old Clinton crowd. They're the ones that helped get Kerry beat in this election. How do you like that? Mm -hmm. Stupid-ass bastards. Carville, it's on there about, about the $200 million, uh, uh, $200 million for Iraq. And he's trying to say $200 billion, and he said it that one day. I'll never forget that show as long as I live. It's a horrible show anyway. Crossfire! 
with a Bob Novak who ought to be in jail, and Mr. Mother Tucker Carlson who with a silly little pansy bow tie. But uh, two hundred million, and, he kept, and we're talking about two hundred billion dollars, okay? And nobody corrected him. And you want to know why? Because nobody cares. Because nobody watches that crap except a bunch of old shut-in housewives and me. Okay, we'll get a bunch of names on the poll here, but I just thought I would feed you that story because it's a very important story. And it goes to show already these seedlings have been planted, okay? Deep inside the Rectum. broadcasting to make sure that satellite radio isn't anywhere near what you think it's going to be. You are listening to Neil Rogers. Exclusive. QAM. Friday, you bastard. Rush is a junkie head. Oh, no, that was prescribed medication. I don't want to go ahead. Rush is a junkie head. Oh, that was medication for my back pain. I suffer now. Now it's 5,000 pills a day. One votes on a poll. He's got almost 60% of them rush. They hate him like poison, man. 59 votes. The radio, TV, or movie celebrity you hate the most. Rush, 59. Dr. Phil, 17. Bill O'Reilly, 12. Miss Kamal, she's got seven. Now, I see, you went ahead and put names on there because O.J. Simpson is not a radio, TV, or movie celebrity, okay? Movies from the past from 85 years ago. Why did you put that on there? Because it's on that fax that I just Yeah, said. Yeah, exactly. It's very popular. Popular. What the hell movie is she in? Well... No, no, seriously. No, not, not that, not, we're not talking about that kind of movie. No, see, they, nah, get out of here. That's true. She did, uh, does she have a TV show now? Yeah, The Simple Life. It's in its second season. She does? Yeah. Paris freaking Hilton, Paris that needle nose bitch. Okay. But OJ don't belong on there. He made movies. Yeah, he made a couple. He made movies once upon a time. So did Edward G. Robinson, okay? All right, we'll take it Okay, on. whatever you say. All right, fine. No, they you want to put OJ on there? I don't think he belongs on there. He's not I a movie care. celebrity just because he made some movies a long time ago. But if you want to say OJ, that's fine because I hit him more than you do. I'm sure. Just a list of names is all we got in these faxes you're sending me. Just a list of names. And Coulter. What else is new? Let's see. Miss Kamal 7, OJ 2, and Coulter's got a pair. Nobody's ever touched them, though, except maybe Miss Fudge. Ooh. Arnold Schwarzenegger's got two, and Paris Hilton don't have any. The simple life, my ass. Oh, Sean Hannity, that's a good one, from our friend Alan uh, in the Keys. Sean Hannity. Another bag of right-wing pus. I oh, speaking of right-wing pus. To effectively fight terror. Get out of here, you phony baloney nimwit. Dumbo. You almost said the other it's word. The, it's the B&B uh, brothers there, Bush and Blair. As Blair's trying to save his ass, and he's there licky licky. He's got his head so far bushes. Rectum. Unbelievable. Look at that. I would swear I just I saw. Him, uh, I just saw Blair's tongue come out of Bush's mouth. <laughs> five six seven oh five sixty. We'll get a million names on the pool here today, okay? Because uh, that thing about satellite radio is very disconcerting. And of course, like I said, Norma Kent's busy ordering pizza burgers. Hey, Norma, you're an idiot. Let's face it, okay? I got a real good idea, Norma. Why don't you go call up the president, okay? You can't get through to the uh, Beasley people. They won't talk to you. Uh, why don't you call up uh, El Presidente? Call up President Bush. Maybe he can uh, handle all your uh, fears for you. You nitwit, you, you simpleton, you silly person. Look what a great job he did for you, though, George. Oh, no. You got one hell of a deal. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil, I got one for the polls. Yes, sir. Uh, Richard Gere, because he likes to go to Home Depot. And okay, great. <laughs> he likes to go to Home Depot, huh? Picking on poor Richard Gere. There's one for you. Richard Gere. Another one of your people. Little silly Spanglish guy. Learn to speak English, will you, okay? What? Richard Gere. 
Richard Gere. He's not a movie star? Yeah, he's not a spick, though. No, I'm talking about the caller, not oh, Richard that Gere. Guy. All right. No, he's one of my people, so they say, and I really don't uh, want any part of him. Richard yeah. Gere. Couldn't, can he act? No. Does he look good? No. Has he got talent? No. But other than that, he's dynamite. Kind of reminds me of Tom Hanks. Yeah, that new uh, animated movie with Tom Hanks is just mm -hmm. one more example about some of these people. They, they just want to, uh, like, they're all over your life. They, right. they, you just drown <laughs> in the sea of uh, fill in the blank. Tom Hanks, he's everywhere, you know. Uh -huh. WQAM, hello. Hey, how are you? Yes, sir. Hey, I was just a big hero, buddy. <laughs> okay, great. WQAM, hello. Hey, did you guys catch a Sydney Private Ryan on ABC last night? Yeah, I saw about 30 seconds of it, and then I saw Tom Hanks' face, and I switched back to the other channel I was watching. Well, the problem, I'm just wondering why the FCC isn't coming down on them for having all the F-bombs and everything. Sir, there were several stations that didn't carry it yesterday because they were afraid that the FCC would, and if you think that that's a good idea, well, uh, I'll see you in the Germany, okay, on the east side. So uh, here's another guy who doesn't understand that President Lincoln's got a bad headache. He's so far behind the times, man. What Do you people read a newspaper, no. a book, no. our website? No. And by the way, speaking of our website, I, I'm going to tell you right now, since I'm, today is the day I really I keep saying I'm promising I'm going to do this, I'm just throwing it all out there. You know, George and I and Josh and Eric, we put a lot of effort into like putting all those stories on there. We're just spinning our wheels. Yeah. All they want to see is the boobies, that's all. you got the Gina Lee Nolan on today, and they can picture, <laughs> you know, which is a good picture, by the way, but nevertheless. There are like a million websites but, you can see boobies on. Right, there. you see a lot more than that. Yeah. But um, the, the fact of the matter is, putting all these stories on there, like assuming that you people are reading them, you're not. You're not. In fact, let me go to our Alexa stats right now, okay? Okay. Can you handle it? Mm -hmm. And we have had a big uh, upturn. Of course, that was because of the election. It's starting to drop back down now. But uh, in the couple of weeks leading up to the election and that week and all of that, oh, yeah, there was all this fantastic amount of interest, and we zoomed way up there to the highest level we've ever had the ratings, you know, considering we're only on one, one little tiny radio station here with a really bad signal. Let's see. The uh, rank, what's our rank? This is of the Alexa uh, viewers. Our rank is uh, 50 uh, some. Anyway, forget about that. 56,000, which isn't really that bad out of the millions of websites. A reach per million users, 30, which is also pretty good. What was it again? About 30, man. Oh, I never played that bit for that guy. He's probably, I'll play it after the next break. Sorry about that, pal. Page views per user. Okay, in other words, the average number of pages that the average person that goes on our website looks at, 1.4. Are okay. you impressed by that? All right. 1.4. So, in other words, that means after they looked at uh, Gina Lee Nolan today, they'll look at four-tenths of a page and the rest of it. Well, no, there's the main page and then the page they click on to get to the beaded curtain. That's right. point four. That's right. <laughs> That's it. So, we're just wasting our time with all these bedtime stories and thinking people are going to read this stuff. That, that's America for you. Americans don't want any. They're happy with the pablum they get. They're, they're delighted. They're not going to waste their time on the Internet. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Working with the president over these... Oh, stuff it up your butt, you silly constipated twit Brit, you idiot. Isn't it past tea time? Have some crumpets, you faggot. Scones. God almighty, is he a piece of turd. G8. Tony Blair. WQAM, hello. Hi. No wonder his wife is screwing around. Yes, sir. How you doing, Neil? All right, Pally. <laughs> Hey, what's the deal with uh, the satellite series? I want to know. I missed it. What's going on with that? I can't believe this. I'm out of town for a couple of days, and all of a sudden there's something else to be pissed about? The deal is that there's a group of broadcasters who already are petitioning the FCC to impose the same regulations on satellite radio that we have on regular over-the-air radio. You've got to be kidding me. I'm not, what do you mean I've got to be kidding? What, did, you don't expect this in today's America? Oh, man. Listen, you know what? I, I want to tell when you When they're right? censoring out a bunch of stations saving Ryan's privates? Yeah. It, it, listen... Uh, don't don't give up hope, okay? Because me, my wife, we read your website. It's great information. There's people out there. Well, nobody else that, does. Nobody uh, else does. If they want to get the truth about what's going on, just like during the election, if everybody in America would have read the stories we had on there, Kerry would have won in a landslide. But, yeah, but no, right. they're busy looking at boobies, man, because they're all sexually repressed Americans. Yeah, that's true. But but I got to tell you something, man. The Democratic awesome. Party needs to pull it together. They, they need to go from being zero to being together, zero. They suck. The Democratic Party needs to, like, uh, just disband. They need, they need a they, new party. 
We need the Italian world is a gentlemento. All right? Yeah. They need to pull it together because they don't... They're, they're I mean, so not a lot of That's all I can say about a man. Not your piquia. All that's right. All man, I know just hang time. in there. Okay, Pally. All right, buddy. Gracias. Arriba Five six. What do you say? Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the Verizon and Singular Wireless lines. Yeah, they're trying to do the satellite. What they've done to. And in, in other words, they don't want you to allow to pick the entertainment that you want to hear. They're going to do everything in their power to make sure that you can't be entertained in the fashion that you want. And always the excuse is, oh, it's the children, the children, about poor children. They're going to hear those words, words that they don't even use anymore because they're passe. You know, they got new words of their own. Mm-hmm. Better words. But that's okay. That's the kind of country that you've chosen, okay? That's the red state crowd mentality, the good, the moral crowd, the, the crowd who are behind all this butchering that's going on. There's that butcher on my TV right now. Hey. Mass murderer is what you are. You make David Berkowitz look like a piker is what you make him look like. That's with a P, not with a K. Man, it's embarrassing to me. Two slaughterers standing side by each right there in Washington, D.C. right now who are responsible for all of this bloodshed and murder. Emancipation through uh, elimination, through decapitation. Stirring all of this crap up, lying through their teeth. But that's okay, because evidently most of America is real happy to send somebody else's kids off to be a human sacrifice. The Howard Stern Show. Neil Rogers, mornings and midday. And sports around the clock. Five, six, Rogers. Forty-five. We got uh, Mad Dog at two from Publix downtown Fort Lauderdale. He'll be in the fresh fruit department. You got Hank and uh, Eddie Kay at uh, Calder this afternoon, four to seven. The Humper, who had a big week according to Jim Sarney, <laughs> <laughs> and might get suspended for it if he does it again. And then the big uh, oh! seven o'clock tonight. Eddie Kay comes back for more at ten. He'll have to be taking odds how long the show is going to be on on Monday, or if the show will be on. Here's a fact that says I hate Bob the Boob Novak. Robert Novak, put that piece of crap on there who belongs in jail. Not just for the outing of Valerie Plain, but for the uh, way he does that thing at the end of Cross... Uh, cross ah! And that phony... Oh, he's just... He's obnoxious, disgusting, sneering, drooling, right-wing pile of turd, man. He's always like he's like an old bullfrog, like a toad. He's an old toad. Yeah, an old toad. Big, fat old toad. That's what he looks like. Some philosopher once said, Without a god, we're condemned to be free. Now, <laughs> very well said. I guess this tells us all we need to know about evangelical Christians and what they have to mind for the rest of us. Christ, it says, with several question marks. As a, in other words, hey, oh God. Right, Jesus Christ. What's a crazy going? I'm taking us down the road to hell. Five six seven oh five sixty. Let's get some more names on the pool, okay? Because the more I say, the more it's going to get uh, testy. You know what I mean? Feeling really testy today. Stop feeling testy. When I sat down here, I mean, it wasn't bad enough that Norma Kent calls me yesterday and is uh, having a discussion about my future and my life and my career while he's ordering pizza burgers at a drive through somewhere. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> anybody who missed the 10 o'clock hour missed that story. It's a true story. This is a man who is so inept, so, uh, so idiotic. Oh, he's, he knows Joyce. He's got a good working relationship with Joyce over there in, in Naples, so he's going to go to the Beasley's behind Greg's back, and he's going to do this, and he's going to do that. In the meantime, now nobody will talk to him because he's such a jackass. Because he because he can't swallow his pride. Well, I could say something about that. Remember I'm that not. song when the swallows come back to Capistrano, whatever the hell I'm I was. I'm not to think about it. Yeah, don't. Don't think about that and Brian Craig in the same sentence. Ah, but at any rate, I'll have two pizza burgers and two medium coke. <laughs> and I'm trying to say something <laughs> about Stern and about Sirius and about my life and my future and uh, you know the whole uh, future of my what little I got time I have left. 
I'll have two pizza burgers and two medium cokes. It, it was like a comedy bit. What's that bit we got about the uh, the guy at the drive through? What is that? Which one? Oh, I don't know. We got a couple of those. Jack, Jack in the, the Box. Like. Huh? Jack in the Box. No, no, not <laughs> that one. The one where the guys actually hear the guy ordering and he can't understand a word that they're saying. Oh, I, I know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, thing. whatever the hell it is, that, that's what it was like. Like, like, like he's reduced my existence in my career to a comedy bit. That's what you are, Norma. You're a quizzling, a silly ass bag. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the Verizon and singular wireless lines. Okay. WQAM. Hello. That's what it was like. Hello. Yes, sir. Neil. Yeah. Hey, how you doing today? I'm doing okay. You've got that Bob Novak impression down. Yeah. Crossfire. Crossfire. Now, you, you got to add a little more enthusiasm. Crossfire. Yeah. First time, long time, Neil. Uh, my, my, my min pin, rest in peace, was a better broadcaster than Bob Novak. Yeah, that's, anyway. that's, that's saying a lot, too. Yeah. Um, I'm just calling. I'm up in Palm Beach. And I'm sorry. Last, yeah. Last night, I'm really sorry. Last night, turned on uh, WTVF to see if they had the uh, the stones to uh, air the broadcast. See the land privates, yeah. Yeah, sure enough, they had their own little veterans tribute, and uh, yeah, they didn't show the movie. They did not show the movie. And Channel Ten, and, uh, Channel Ten didn't. Dayton Broward, WPLG. Well, they refused to show it, and I got and, on and the ABC phone. in Buffalo, uh, WKBW showed it here in, in Buffalo. I got on the phone and uh, and uh, got their uh, voicemail, and the voicemail indicated uh, very cheerfully, "If you have any comments about our programming, press whatever." Uh -huh. And they took you to a voicemail box, mean? and then cut you off. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I called back again and to try and get the news department, and I got this uh, individual from the news department on the phone, and you could hear all the phone lines ringing in the background, and I started screaming. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It was like a scene out of a cartoon. You could yeah, but you must be able to pick up Channel 10 from uh, Dayton Broward, no? No, we got cable. It's not on cable. Oh, I see. That's right. That was yeah, like so your local affiliate. You know, and I just and I just told the guy, don't you realize how ironic this is that this movie's all about these these courageous people right. who fought for our freedom, mm -hmm. and and here we are, you know, not hearing this as a tribute to these people. And I'm not a veteran; I'm in my 40s, but I just took it really, really personally. And yeah. and, and my wife is like, why are you getting so upset? I said, you don't understand this. This is just really, really upsetting. And what yeah. a where are you going? You're upset. You're taking this very personally. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So you know, and. and the guy says to me, well, why don't you give me your name and number, and, and I'll have the general manager call you back. And I said, yeah. yeah, that'll happen. Yeah, if I were you, I'd sit right there by the phone until a week from Circus, and uh, he'll be calling you, man. That phone's yeah, right. I just want to say, Vicki Regan, general manager of WPBF, and all of it, you're cowards, and uh, I'm ashamed to be Amen. part of the marketplace right now. Amen. What a disgrace. Okay, bye, bye. Bye. that's in Palm Beach County, where, by the way, the living and breathing people are supposed to be. Those are mostly blue state crowd. A lot of Jews, a lot of, uh, of course, a lot of rednecks, too, but uh, a lot of Schwarzers, a lot of uh, living and breathing people in Palm Beach County who don't, oh, don't, uh, who don't suck up to that censorship crap. See, they're, they're sucking up to the NASCAR crowd, the nose-picking crowd, you know? Oh, you. Yeah, that, that's what America's become, trailer trash. I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if Jerry Springer's on 24-7 on every channel pretty soon. Except, of course, for the ones that got Pat Robertson and Jerry Fowlball and Jan and Paul's crotch. That's what you're going to get. Plus, of course, a big dose of democracy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> democracy, my ass, W. What a jackass. You look at him and he just, I don't know about you, but when I look at him, I just get very angry. I get ill. I get, no, I get angry. I get furious. And I look at that and I say, just, just like that front page we got on the website there about the uh, Daily Mirror in London. How can 54 million, whatever the odd number is, Americans be so stupid? 59 million. How can they be so stupid? Well, they couldn't have done it without the media. Don't forget, Eric, leave that baby up on there, okay? Oh, Phil Henry for the poll, somebody says. Are you sure? Well, evidently, it says, the more I hear him, chill for Bush, the angrier I get. What an idiotic sellout little, um, and then I can't read that word because it starts with a PR, you know? And it isn't pride. It's more like, um, yeah. More like you get, like, from a rose bush, you know, from the thorn in the rose bush. That's what it says. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to say what it is. Well, I can say it. Uh, it just felt like a prick. That's from oh Rose Bush. God. That's right. When you walk by too close. Don't watch yourself. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the Verizon and singular wireless line. Names for our list. The radio, TV, or movie celebrity you hate the most. Hate. 
despise. That's okay. It's okay to hate in America because a bunch of farmers and goyim are running the country now. A bunch of crazy evangelical Christians that want to tell you how to live your life and what you can watch and what you can read and what you can think. George Orwell would be so proud. He was just 20 years off, that's all. What do we got so far? Rush 106, Dr. Phil 38, not even a kind. Even Dr. Phil can't give a rush to run for his money. Bill O'Reilly 23, he's small potatoes. Overblown. Oops. Ann Coulter 18, OJ 13. I, I, he's, yeah, he was in a few crappy movies, you're right, but. Sean Hannity's got a dozen. Miss Kamal, she's got eight. You believe it? I, I, don't, I don't want to say. I had a line there. Oh, I see. Something to do with Brian Craig? WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil, how you doing? Okay, Pally. Listen, I just had a comment, if I can. Go right ahead. Take your uh, time, man. It's America. On this show, you can still say something. Thank goodness. Because, well, I've well, like got two comments. And one, first of all, i got to tell everyone, in, I, I get a lot of access to international uh, feeds from television. Yep. If you would, if you could see what was really going on and the video that they're showing in other parts of the world as opposed to the sanitized bullcrap right. that we got That's going right. on here. Well, I got the BBC right here now, as a matter of fact. Chaser, then we'll yeah, get the same instability. Guys, is still, it's not what is where it? they show two or three-year-olds with no legs. Right. That's just amazing to me. You know that the Americans would sanitize their... No, everything that much. is sanitized propaganda on American TV. That's why the American public has got no information, because the American media are a bunch of shills, and they all ought to be in jail. You know what's amazing is that... The, the, the course of the Vietnam War turned because of what the Americans were seeing on the TV. I mean, that is right. And Walter Cronkite was the first one to break the mold, man, and all of a sudden to turn against it. And once the media jumped on a bandwagon and started showing the public all of those bodies and the coming home in body bags and tell us that the military was lying through their teeth about casualties and injuries, then all of a sudden the public jumped on the bandwagon and turned against us. But you don't see that happening now. Now it's just one or a glorious cliche, Operation uh, Glorious uh, Butchery. Uh, whatever, I'll, I'll, uh, you know, whatever they tell them to put on there, they stick it on I'll, there. I'll tell you one cliche. Well, people like probably, CNN belong uh, on death row, I'll tell you that right now. All those self-hating yeah. faggots on there, like, like Miss Humper. I will tell you one cliche, though, that really I think I'd love to hear again, if, if, in a variation, though. Live yeah. from the rooftops of London, this is Edward R. Murrow. Yeah. You know what I mean? This, well, if he would have quit the smoking of... them camels, man, if he'd have quit chain smoking them camels, he might still be around now. <laughs> Actually, it's doobie, but hey, <laughs> yeah. they eat your don't. Hey, no, he, he, used to, no, he used to smoke cigarettes on the air during the show. Who? Edward R. Murrow? Edward R. Murrow, yes. Yeah, he was a chain never, smoker, man. I never got really a, the chance to, like, you know, to see him, you know, I mean, I'm not that old. Well, but, uh, that's why he's I, pushing I, I up Daisy history. now. That's why he's driving Miss Daisy. Crazy. Yeah, I, know, you know, I, I know the history, and to be quite honest, you know, the, the sanitized bullcrap that we're getting kind of yeah. even makes you... Like, and we, and, and you notice when somebody tries to grow a little pear, like Dan Rather or somebody, right away they, like, try to get him fired. They shove him back into a broom closet. They postpone that documentary about how the fake, uh, yeah. all the fake reasons we got into the war in the first place. And then, yeah. and then CNN comes along with this uh, expose about uh, the Saudis, and they show it the Sunday after the election is all over with. I, I was a cameraman in Afghanistan. Yeah. On September 19th, I was already there. I spent months over there for Fox News. I worked oh, three God. weeks on a story trying to prove who's that complicity in the early days of the war mm -hmm. when they weren't supposed to be with us, you know, we're, 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 we're ex-communists. We finally got the footage of all the, the Air Force, and then they, they pooped can the story. Three weeks, Neil, three weeks chasing down an Air Force base, and they mm -hmm. pooped can the story. They we got a daisy cutter blowing up a whole town, and they yeah. never aired the footage. And it pissed me off so much that when they asked me to go to Iraq, I said, no way, Jack. Good because choice. It, 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 it's, it's a different thing, Neil, to like risk your life and to tell the story that needs to be told so that people can see what's going on. Yeah, but the problem, no like, you already know the story's not going to be told here. That's the problem. But if but it's good. not going to be told, good luck, I'm you, Jack. Not do here, it. Man. I'll, see, I'll see you at the border. Yeah, take it easy. All right, get out of here. Wow. Well, he's emotional. He's whipped up to a frenzy. He's seen it. He knows it. He knows where it's at. 11.57 at QAM. You are listening to Neil Rogers. Exclusively on 560 QAM. Fiedler is dumb, and Dave Wanstead is dumb founded. Oh, it's the problem one hour. Did we forget Haven't that? you heard? Don't forget it. Mel has a personal stalker like David Jones. They're both pursued by a stranger 
Mel Gibson fears for his own life Since the passion of the Christ and paparazzi Now his life is in danger See, leave it to those Canadian boys with a good sense of humor, man. Mike Myers, Jim Carrey, right? Right. Uh, all those Canadians, eh? Come on, come on with a few more now. Oh, Alex Trebek. Alex Trebek. Well, what's funny about him? John Candy. I'm talking about funny people like John Candy, not uh, Avril Lavigne. Nothing funny, funny about her. He's not funny. He's kind of a funny nose. And what about Leslie Nielsen? You leave him right, out as he chopped. Uh, that could be the funniest movie of all time, Airplane. Could be. Wouldn't you think? A funniest non Monty Python movie. That Nothing is. funny about Mel Gibson, I'll tell you that. That's why I played that bit. Somebody spawns Mel on the pole. Despise him. Find him obnoxious and disgusting. <laughs> Another money-grabbing religionist, and sorry for the redundancy. Wow. Oh, the, the Passion of the Christ. Give me a frickin' break already, will you please? The passion of the Christ, my frickin' ass. That the power of Christ compels you! Oh, brother. So many suckers in so little time. So many idiots. So many uneducated fools. The passion of the Christ. And then the Pope says, It is as it was. Uh, pass me my cod liver oil. It is as it was. Pass me my prune juice. Wow. Wonder if he shares the Swiss guard, you think? With who? His buddies. His bunk butt buddies. Uh -huh. Well, that's especially in it, peddling bunk. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the Verizon and Singular Wireless Line. Let's get these phones ringing here, baby. Let's get some more names on that pool. Let's get with it. Let's hop on it. How are you doing with that Firefox, by the way? I love it. It's great. It's fast. You're using it? Mm hmm. Totally. Yeah, I am. And everybody I tell, I told told a friend about it here the other day, and he said, "What what's that, Firefox?" And this this guy's a computer guy. Never heard of it. That's because it's so new. See, and you think I'm an old uh, turd, which I am, but every now and then, when you least expect it, I discover something really neat, like Firefox. Now, do we have anything on our website about that or not? Or is that a stupid question? I haven't checked, but Eric was going to work on it yesterday. He's going to put that. Link oh yeah, up he's he's working on it all right. That's the problem. That's why I think he just answered my question. Thank you. WQAM, hello. I'm going to talk to Neil. Yeah, well, guess what? Neil don't talk to schmucks like you. Okay? He talks to a lot of schmucks, but not like you. But that phony act. I'm going to talk to Neil. What was that? Huh? It was what it was. A putz. WQAM, hello. You. you. I got a couple of you for the pool. Yeah. Uh, Tom Scarborough. Take that Who? Question. Tom Scarborough? Yeah, Scarborough. You mean, you mean Joe Scarborough? Yeah, whatever the guy's name is. Whatever his stupid ass name is, yeah. Uh, Dan the Bastard. That guy's a freak. Yeah. Although he is on TV, he's on ESPN. Did you know that? No. How would I know you that? Put, you can put Dan the Bastard on there. It's okay. It's on radio. Also. Oh, he's on. He is on the radio. We know that. Unfortunately, he's not on with us anymore. He's on with uh, ESPN 790 over there with Joe Rosen, Craig Minervini, a real, a real weenie. Well, see, I had a good story. Oh, here it is. I'm trying to print this out, and i got to reboot the whole thing all over again because they don't want me to be able to print this out because then I'd be able to read it on the air, although I could read it right off of there, I guess. Afghanistan TV networks ordered off the air because they're putting stuff on the air. It's getting just like America, you see? Mm -hmm. We remade them in our own image and not the other way around, I guess. The Afghans. Really a horrible story. Well, we can't let them report stories about themselves. Mm-hmm. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the Verizon and singular wireless line. WQAM, hello. I want to hear more about Neil's mom's butt plug. WQAM, hello. QAM out there. WQAM, hello. Hey Neil, how you doing? Okay, Pally. Uh, one person I can't stand is David Spade. David Ooh, Spade is a fine choice. choice. I, I don't know how, choice. how did who did he have to blow to get to where he's at? I have no clue. Who was it's okay, we seem to have an epidemic of those now, huh? I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. David Spade, though, was a good choice. <laughs> he blows. I think that's what the guy was trying to say, that's wasn't right. it? Yes. What's this stuff you're sending me here, a fax that says, stuff. oh, these, Ira, how come there's no way to email you? Because we don't uh, want to waste our time with that crap. That's why. Give me a break, Ira. Can you imagine wasting time with 80s in emails? Bad enough we, we, we take these calls. That. 
We tried it once, and it was a cacophony of swill. It was every bit as good as the calls we get, except much more. Yeah. Says, I ain't no broadcaster. With a voice that's a cross between a New York Jew, which I was, and a Coral Springs Jew, which I am, does it get any worse than that? So I don't want to torture your audience. In other words, they don't want to call. So you can fax like you're doing here, Ira. Anyway, Bush is evil, dumb, everything you all. So many thanks for saying it. Be sure to check out. He's got some website. Hundreds of I'm sorry world photos from frustrated Americans apologizing to the world for the last election. Hundreds of Europeans accepting our apologies. Sure to cheer up depressed, pissed off Democrats like us. Keep up the good work. Sorry, Miss Private Ryan. I, I didn't miss it. I don't want to watch it. Why, why do I want to watch it? The ABC affiliate here kept splashing teasers over the film for tonight's big news feature, Secrets of the Roofing Industry Exposed. <laughs> oh. Well, let's see. This is from Boca, so how is that possible? Because uh, the other guy said they didn't show it on Channel 12. I don't know. It says, right when guys were getting their heads blown off real quick. Well, whatever you say, Ira, okay? Have a good life. Okay, here's that story. Make you feel right at home. Those of you who are getting tired of the censorship, you better get used to it because you ain't seen nothing yet. Satellite radio is next. Then it'll be cable TV. Then it'll be your pop-up toaster. Then it'll be the magazines you buy, the books that somebody reads to you, things like that. Western pop videos, India's boy, uh, Bollywood movies, and even Charlton Heston's The Ten Commandments have Afghanistan's fledgling cable TV stations in hot water. How do you like that? Oh, my God. An appeal from the country's top Islamic judge this week prompted the cabinet to order TV networks temporarily off the air just three years after a Taliban ban on the TV was lifted. You know, I keep forgetting to play that. Uh, no, I don't. I don't forget. I just don't want to play it. That we just, the guy, you know. Got dirty, man. I don't feel like playing that today. We got too many other timely things, and I don't feel like every time somebody farts, I'm going to, like, uh, run and sniff it, you know? No, I, I don't feel like playing that thing today, that Regis and Puffy it's thing. But it's, uh, got 30, man. Yeah, that's why I don't have time for that caca, okay? we got bigger fish to fry. we only got a four-hour show today. In case you missed it, we started at 10.07 today because Howard was on tape. We never have any idea when we're starting. It's a nightmare. It's a Greg Reed-inflicted nightmare, okay? I hope, that's, I hope that somebody pees on his sushi is what I hope. Anyway... The spat is the latest in the battle for control of Afghan society between still influential religious conservatives and liberals and entrepreneurs enjoying new freedoms. Oh, yeah, new freedoms. What's that all about? The consequences are disastrous for Afghanistan. Saad Mozeni, director of Tolo TV, said yesterday he predicted more restrictions would follow. Oh, that's since we got one in there. Supreme Court Chief Justice Fazal Hadi Shinwari. An arch-conservative appeal to President-elect Hamid Karzai during Ramadan to shut down TV programming, and the cabinet did so, at least until, until new regulations had drawn up. It was a victory for Shinwari, who was on the losing side in January, when the government ignored his protest at the return of veiled female singers to state television screens. The ban had originated with Islamic fundamentalists who ruled until the early 1990s and was lifted only when the repressive Taliban regime fell. A screening last week of the Ten Commandments starring the unctuous Charlton Heston provided ammunition for the conservatives. How do you like that? They probably got upset when he said, You son of a bitch. It showed the prophet Moses with short trousers, and among the girls, Wahid Mujdai, Supreme Court spokesman, said, He's a very holy person, and Islam respects him. This is wrong. Moses had short trousers, and he was hanging out in the middle of all the girls. Boy, I sure hope nothing was poking through his trousers. <coughs> Mozeni, director of Tolo TV, a new Afghan channel that showed the biblical epic, said the situation epitomized the threat to free speech in a country championed by the United States as a model for the region. Yeah, as a model for us. That's right. I guarantee you they won't be showing Saban Ryan's privates on there anytime soon in Afghanistan. Crazy bastards. Oh, here's another one for the poll from uh, Chronic John. And see, it's the same facts as the same. You know, don't take it personal, John, in Columbia, South Carolina. Tucker Carlson. Okay, he belongs on there. Jeez, John, get a life already, will you? I have no life. Of course, he's in South Carolina. He's got a good excuse. Along with that uh, Jim DeMint guy, you know? Oh, brother. Jim DeMinton and that, uh, what's the guy's name in Oklahoma? You're asking me? Yeah, the senator, the senator like Tom, uh, what is his name? Colby, Colburn, something like that. Wow. Colburn. And then, of course, uh, singing a different tune in North Dakota now. South Dakota, whatever the hell it is. South Dakota. They got to beat out uh, Tom, Tommy Toon, or Jim Toon, John, whatever his name is. The one that beat out uh, your buddy. There. Delay. No, not Delay, the one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. I think I'm losing it. I think my brains are getting fried from this whole experience, man. I'm taking several months off, paid. Anyway, he's accused of trying to silence the increasingly sophisticated media coverage of Afghan politics. Ministers will come and go, but the free speech media should be here to stay to serve the nation and its public. He said, this is the time for people to take a stand. 
in the political jockeying for positions in Karzai's new government following his victory in Afghanistan's fake, uh, fake fixed October 9th election. The liberals lost their champion. Cultural Minister Maktam Rahim fought for the TV stations in January, but he's accused of switching his views to try to salvage his post as Karzai ponders his new team. Mujda made plain the conservatives' main target are Indian films, hugely popular with young Afghans for their raunchy dance routines. Oh, no, not raunchy dance routines. Yeah, they're grinding. Immoral movies were even blamed for the recent fatal stabbing of a student at Kabul University, which has led to street protest in the capital. The boys are disturbing the girls in these films. Then there are uh, gangs fighting each other. All of these things are against Afghan culture, Mujda That's said. All of these things. Yeah. Mohammed Hashim Paksad. Paskudnyak, owner of Ariana, one of about 20 cable operators in Kabul, said he read about the new ban in the newspaper and stopped transmitting for fear that police in a bad mood might smash up his orifice. I'm a Muslim. I wouldn't show any sexy films, he said. This is just a conspiracy against the cable operators. These people just want to keep Afghan people in the dark. They want to keep them really, really dark. Isn't that great? Just like America. Same thing. As we're exporting censorship all over the world. Good for us. Remember when we originally went in there and uh, was it in Fallujah? We, well, one of the Iraqi cities where we knocked the uh, TV station off the air. Right. I think it was in Fallujah. One of the cities where we had some serious tourists, and the people uh, started getting really pissed off and fired up about it. Can't imagine why they don't like us, you know. So Where's those places? flowers and candy we were supposed to be getting for our troops? Huh? Where's the flowers and candy, you bastards, you barbarians, you schmata heads? Well, oh, that's right. They're not the schmata heads. Send the Saudis are the schmata heads. Our good, close, Ooh. personal friends, the Saudis. Send 1213 at 560 WQM. Let me tell you about our good friends at Guaranteed Mortgage Bankers in Deerfield Beach. With over 275 different mortgage programs available to them, they will find a mortgage for you, no matter what your situation is. Recently, they helped a listener of ours who never thought he'd be able to qualify to buy his own home. Not only were they able to qualify him, they were able to present him three options as to the type of mortgage he could get. And they worked closely with him to determine which was best. And then, guess what? They made it happen. That's Guaranteed Mortgage Bankers in Deerfield Beach. You can call them today, tool-free. Good idea. 1-800-734-6616. We're looking for an interest-only loan, a 30-year fixed rate. About 30, man. Or one of the many low-rate adjustable mortgages that they have waiting on you. Guaranteed Mortgage Bankers in Deerfield Beach, I guarantee you, has what you need. They offer payments as low as 332 bucks for every 100 grand you borrow. Guaranteed Mortgage Bankers in Deerfield Beach can make it happen for you, too, because not only will they make your mortgage work, but they'll even send you on a cruise. That is correct. After you close your loan with Guaranteed Mortgage Bankers in Deerfield Beach, you can pick one of six different seven-night cruises' compliments of these fine folks at Guaranteed Mortgage Bankers. Call them today. Whether you're looking to buy a new home, an investment property, or just refinance your current mortgage, call them toll-free at 1-800-734-6616 or on the Wicked Web at GuaranteedMortgageBankers.com. That's Guaranteed Mortgage Bankers in Deerfield Beach where they'll treat you just like family. 1-800-734-6616. You're listening to Neil Rogers. Ready to rock. Saturday, March 32nd, the real American Idol is coming to town. By the Lord. William Hall. The rhythm take you over by the Lord. William Hall. She goes, she goes. Hi. Oh, man, she goes, she goes. I can't hold his job. Don't they know, no, no. This is my way. Oh, she's a ball, ball, she's a ball, ball, she's a ball, ball. You get it all. In one amazing night, William Hall, live. Oh, no, no, no. I'm a rocket man. If the dome is rocking, don't bother knocking. <laughs> William Hall at the dome, Saturday, March 32nd. Tickets are on sale for every water takeout. Here's an excellent choice for the poll. Will Smith, oh, man, do I want a gag? Maybe I can change my vote. He makes Rush look like a good guy. Talk about an arrogant, egotistical <laughs> piece of crap. Pompous jackass, but no talent, by the way. Can he sing? No. Can he act? No. Is he funny? No. I think it's a racial thing. I think so. Will Smith, get him on there. He's, he's getting jiggy. Five, six, seven. Let's get a million names on a poll, okay, because we've been uh, whipped up to a frenzy. This thing about uh, satellite radio, it's just no matter what you people try to do. Here's some good news. And, and let me just say this to you, okay, because I am so sick and tired of these Democrat apologists... You know, in fact, that's one of the reasons that people like uh, Schmendrick there from uh, Tom Daschle. He's another wimp. And uh, Gebhardt. They're all a bunch of weak, weak sisters is what they are. Weak, wimpy sisters. Why should anybody be apologizing for Michael Moore? Well, you know, the Democratic Party, they made a bad mistake tying their star to Michael Moore. What's wrong with Michael Moore, okay? 
If we only had about 10,000 more Michael Moores with the balls uh, he has and the honesty and showing the public what it's really all about, then maybe we wouldn't have these Nazis running maybe. the country right now and all these innocent people being slaughtered all over the world right now. The maybe. same people say Gore lost because uh, Lieberman wasn't conservative enough. No, he lost because Lieberman was too conservative. He was right. an Orthodox Jew, that's why. That's the same people say and this that. This is the only time. show in America that's got the balls to tell you that. Just take a look at this last election. You think that those rednecks in the red states are going to have vote for a ticket where they got an Orthodox Jew on the ticket or any kind of a Jew? The answer is absolutely, positively, no, no, no chance. But the media doesn't want to. Oh, yeah, Jim Rome. Here's another one. Good one. Romy. Hey, Romy. How you doing, homie? He sucks. He sounds like a little kid. A little sports nerd like Clarence, you know. Oh, in baseball today, the Yankees won again. You know, a little sports nerd kid. See, one thing about the sports people, most of them take themselves much too seriously. It's only a ball game, okay? Innocent people are dying, and you people are worried about a stupid bunch of ball games. The sports thing. I thought we were getting away from that, and of course now we got all this uh, deal now with the steering going off one of these days soon before we know it. <laughs> <laughs> they said, yes, if you want to do it, move. Yeah, see? That's right. That's what's going to happen with Infinity and with the Stern. And then he'll go on serious, and then they'll put the same restrictions on him there, and then he'll be, nah. Because you understand with him, it's all about him. See, that's the thing that's always bothered me with that ego and with that crowd that follows him. It's all about him. And what did I tell you? It's about the entire industry. He wasn't in Saving Private Ryan last time I checked. But that didn't keep it from being censored. He wasn't, uh, he wasn't on that uh, Swift Boat uh, propaganda piece they put on Sinclair Broadcasting. But nevertheless, they still aired it in, in some form or another and put on an hour of propaganda. See, it's not about any one person, but when you're dealing with big egos, it's, uh, that's what you get. Anyway, the good news is Michael Moore plans a follow-up to his Fahrenheit 9-11. Um, let's see. According to a Hollywood trade paper. See, they put in all this extraneous, stupid stuff. CNN, you people, I still say, I'm going to stick by what I said a few months ago. The CNN transmitter, their towers, wherever the hell they're broadcasting from, needs to be knocked down. They need to be taken off, taken off the air. I mean that. CNN is the poison. Because, you know, the people that watch Fox, I mean, those people already, uh, that's like the people that watch Siri Falwell and Pat Robertson. Right. Forget about them. They're, They're lost. Healthy. But the idea that CNN is presumably or supposedly a real news outlet where you're really going to get information and news about what's really, you're nothing but a bunch of propaganda shields, man. You're an embarrassment. You're humiliating and degrading. You're just a bunch of carnival pitchmen with that stupid and bald uh, James Carville on there who now just sits and quakes in the chair because he don't know what to say. And, of course, crosshair, that big toad, that big fat pompous toad Bob Novak who ought to be on death row right now. And you notice we don't hear one more word about Valerie Plame or about any of this stuff. No, that's okay. We're about the energy meetings and about the Enron and all the, this new uh, Jose Jimenez uh, uh, clown that we got for the attorney general. Because the media can't be bothered. You know, if you go on the internets, you can read a million stories about that. That's why we put them on our website, and none of you are reading them, which is frustrating as hell to me. That really pisses me off. 1.4 pages, my ass. Isn't that ridiculous? Not even enough to wipe with. No, no, seriously, it's, it's not enough to waste our time with. Talk about uh, being in La La Land, living in a dream world. We're, we're, we're kidding ourselves, man. We're yanking it. Well, Michael Moore told Deadly Variety that he and Harvey Weinstein, the Miramax boss who produced the film, hoped to have Fahrenheit 9-11 and a half ready in two to three years. Oh, two to three years. Call me when it's ready. 51% mm -hmm. of the American people lacked information in this election, and we want to educate and enlighten them. Moore was quoted in yesterday's edition of Variety. They weren't told the truth. We're communicators. It's up to us to start doing it now. A spokesman for Fellowship Adventure Group formed by Weinstein and Brother Bob to help distribute Fahrenheit 9-11 didn't immediately return a call, yada, yada, yada. It did this, it did that. The issues for follow-up film will remain the same. Iraq and terrorism, Moore said. The official mourning period is over today. There is a silver lining. George W. Bush is prohibited by law from running again. He said, well, that's great. He hadn't even started the new term yet until uh, January 20, whatever it is. And we're supposed to be optimistic about that. Have some more sandwiches, Michael, okay? Have another uh, couple of pizza burgers with Norma Ken. Can you, I, you know, I still can't get over that. I mean, here is what is supposed to be an important, a significant discussion for, uh, about business, okay? I'll have two pizza burgers and two medium coffee. And whatever I'm saying, you, you can tell. He's not listening. He can't hear it. He's uh, he got his cell phone up somebody's uh, butt. What? Yeah, you heard what I said. <laughs> yeah. Rectum. You heard exactly what I said. The buttmeister. <laughs> you heard of the buttmeister? He's uh, doing the old buttmeister. The radio, TV, or movie celebrity you hate the most is Rush Limbaugh, lard ass, 160 do, pill popping, phony hypocrite, fat ass, liar. Liar. Another one ought to be in jail. He ought to be in there with Bob Novak. I bet you they'd be having a real sweet time together then, too. Crossfire. 
Dr. Phil, 53, another pompous, fat-ass, southern, drooling idiot. Bill O'Reilly, 34. You see, back in the day, see, Dr. Phil, I guess, is small potatoes now. Ann Coulter, 33. Sean Hannity has got... Uh... About 30, man. Oh, would you play that bit? No. <laughs> O.J. Simpson, 28. Miss Kamal, she's got 11. Boyfriends. I bet you she's got a lot of company in there. Uh, Paris Hilton's got 10. Arnold Schwarzenegger, 4. Dan LaBastard. I like the way we spelled that without the S. 3. See, I, I, mentioned, I wanted the S in there. It's in LaBastard, not LeBetard. Already Richard Year, 3. Robert Novak, 2. He'll be on this afternoon on Crossfire. Either that or the pansy with a bow tie, one or the other. Uh, let's see. Will Smith's got one. David Spade's got one. Joe Scarborough, I love the way we spell that, has got one. Jim Rome, Tucker Carlson, Phil Henry, they don't have any. And I like the way we spell Phil Henry, too. Man, that was okay. really uh, embarrassing. By the way, something. Yeah? The uh, Foxfire Linky thing did go on yesterday, and we've got 132 points already. Well, well uh, now what does that mean? What can we cash that? Is that like getting points on my card at Woodbine? <laughs> Apparently, Foxfire ranks the uh, sites that they get referrals from. Yeah. So the more points you get, the higher you you get on the rankings. Right. Well, well, let me take a puke at it right now, okay? Let me go to our home page, which I very rarely look at. I got my own page. I don't need no home went on page. Yesterday okay, morning. homeboy. It went on yesterday? Morning. Well, that's great. It's nice that they're uh, doing that, but it would be also nice if they would read those bedtime stories. Well, I have to say we get another week. If we don't see an improvement in the number of pages that they're reading, I mean, it's pretty, ch- pretty childish and sad when you have to try to cajole and threaten the audience to, like, start reading the stories. I mean, what's the point? You when, know? When you look at the stats, can you see which pages they go to or just... No, in no. I see. No, but you can, go to, you can go on your stats and see uh, what, where they uh, are going. Mm-hmm. In other words, how they get onto the site, which uh, the first thousands of them, thousands and thousands, always are through the uh, beaded curtain, of course. They want to see naked pictures, that's all. They don't give a crap about what's going on in the world. Did you see the result of the election? Okay, now, where is this thing? I'm looking, I see Bush's brain. I see uh, the Bush behind the thing. I see the 59 million dumb Americans, Bush flipping the bird, what me worry. I don't see that. Now, where is it? I don't know. Well, what do you mean you don't know? You just give me a... Oh, there's Firefox on the left. Safer, faster, and better, Firefox. And you click on that nice little logo. It's a nice logo, by the way. Right under where it says beaded curtain. So it's close to beaded curtain. Maybe they're hitting it by mistake. And I don't, I don't uh, see any ranking rating view. No, no. Eric was just reporting that. Apparently on their site you can see the rankings. I don't know if they list the top 100, top 100. Oh, no, 1, but you don't understand. When you put in a Firefox, you can do that on any site. If you have the Alexa toolbar, you can do that. No, I, I don't know. Well, let me check it out during the break. 28 past noon at QAM. We're a little bit uh, behind the time because we started at 10.05 this morning. And we're still trying to figure out what time we go home. John Kerry made some stabs late one night when he insisted that the president wasn't doing things right. Then Bush's numbers failed to rise, and suddenly we began to realize Democrat. they were doing the George Bush back. His record they tried to track. Democrat. Supporters left in a flash. Democrat. They did the George Bush bash. From a tiny little office in the White House wing east, he pondered terrorism and Middle East peace. He thought of John Kerry grabbing more votes, then thought of grabbing Kerry by the throat. The Democrats! They did the George Bush bash. The Democrats! His record they really tried. The Democrats! Supporters left in a flash. The Democrats! They did the George Bush bash. Kerry's numbers were shocking and quite profound. George had to do something and not monkey around. Those important supporters he needed to revive. With more anti-Kerry ads help him stay alive. The Democrats. They did the George Bush bash. The Democrats. His record they really tried. The Democrats. Supporters left in a flash. The Democrats. They did the George Bush bash. Now everything's cool just as Kerry had planned. His voter popularity begins to expand. There's really no trick. You just tell the truth and keep crushing the president with critical reviews. The Democrats. They're doing the George Bush bash. The Democrats. 
It's past they really try. It's catching on in a flash. They're doing the George Bush bosh. Now, see, that's a election Halloween, uh, all of those things. But it was good enough I figured I'd play it, right? Right. It's a good bit. Just a little bit uh, untimely because of the fact that they're sending me this stuff like three weeks after the fact. They're sending me stuff late. I want to say it right now that uh, HCN uh, sucks. Okay? Premier, it sucks. Pretty sad. And, of course, if our people were right on top of it, they'd be, like, uh, watching these things with an eagle eye if they really cared about the things that make a difference, that make that matter, the things that really matter, as, be, as opposed to a bunch of stupid ball games. Here's a good choice for the poll, by the way, and I despise him. I think it's a racial thing. P. Diddy. I said an overrated piece of crap. He makes my... In fact, you know something? That's enough to make me want to play that bit with Regis and P. Diddy. You know? Maybe that's what but I'm I want. thinking. But I won't. Yo, yo. You think? No. I don't know. I'm thinking that maybe I ought to Show play time. Huh? What the hell is it called? Who wants? Puffy. No, it's called Puffy uh, with Regis. <laughs> All right. But I'm not playing it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like playing it. It's like young Neil. It's like all this other stuff they want over and over again. He knows where it came from. A dirty man. Yeah, that's right. That's old dirty bastard, man. Old dirty. Dirty, they call him. Which rhymes with dirty. Anyway, let's get some more names on the poll, because I'm really... I, I don't know. I just feel, like, so furious. I think it's the aftermath of the election. You know what I mean? Were you, do you ever, like, feel, like, real angry, but you really couldn't put your thumb on it or exactly what you were pissed off about? Which rhymes with dirty. Anyway, let's get some more names on the poll, because I'm really... I, I don't know. I just feel, like, so furious. I think it's the aftermath of the election. You know what I mean? Were you, do you ever, like, feel, like, real angry, but you really couldn't put your thumb on it or exactly what you were pissed off about? Because we've got all these external things, you know, like the Greg Reed business and the Stern show. And, and, but, but that's a constant. I mean, when you're working for a bunch of buttholes, uh, you know, that, that doesn't change. They treat you like garbage. They treat everybody like crap. In fact, maybe if we carry on enough, we can get suspended with pay. That sounds like a good scam. How come I've never been suspended on this station? See, I don't do suspensions. Unlike Joe Rose and the Humper, I don't do suspensions. That, that's that's uh, an embarrassment. And, and, of course, then, then on top of it, they lie like crazy about the, re the real reasons are. At least the, the first two. Oh, well, Hank was ripping the food at the stadium. Well, uh, so, what, so what's wrong with that? Well, Mr. H got upset. They, screw Mr. H, okay? Who the hell gives a crap about Mr. H? And then the second one was that deal he had in the parking lot when he told Scran what a slut and a bitch he was. And, uh, you know, so what's wrong with telling somebody the truth? And then he got suspended again. And then, well, why well, even go through it, right? Right. But I think the aftermath of that ugly election, and it just frustrating as hell, you know, and you just understand that there's never going to be another Democrat elected in our lifetime. It just isn't going to happen. No chance. I mean, if it's even close, the fix will be in. See, in other countries, they have these bloody revolutions and people die in the streets and all the, you know, people are shooting. In America, they just take the election now because, you know, it just wouldn't be palatable. It would be, it would be uh, messy and ugly. We're busy killing people uh, thousands of miles away. That's right. okay. Ruined. Right. But domestically, that's not, it don't look too good. And the rest of the world would raise an eyebrow. In fact, they're already raising eyebrows about this last fixed election again. But nothing's going to change. So I'm just, uh, I, I don't think I'm ever going to recover from that. Even being uh, a distance away. WQAM, hello. Yes. Yes, Neil? sir. Yes. Hey, Neil. Uh, for the poll, uh, how about Geraldo or Rick Sanchez? Okay, how about both of them? Sounds good. they got something in common. Oh, they sure do. I think uh, you never seen them together at the same time. They both wear a mean quiet barrel. Okay, thanks, amigo. Of course, that Dan LeBatton, he's the only one. Which I can't say anything else for him. But uh, he's the only one who admits that he listens to this show. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Well, Rick Shaw does. Well, Rick Shaw is not a national. I mean, Rick Shaw, plus he voted for Bush anyway. We like him a lot, except for the fact his politics suck. Maybe that's why he plays so much crappy music there on Magic. We love you, Rick, and your cap and everything else, but your politics blow. It's just, he just wants to feel macho. He's a macho guy, you know? And when you work around all them pansies in the broadcasting industry, you've got to, like, do something to compensate, make yourself feel like a real man. WQAM, hello. Oh, Neil. Uh, yes, sir. Can you add Ray Romano to the poll? Ray Romano is a fine choice. And uh, can you hold me through the break? For what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hold, hey, hold, hold this, Thank Kelly. Get out of here. Yeah, hold it through the break. <laughs> that's like the olden days. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Let me put you on hold. Okay. That, that's what all the uh, the light bulb talk shows used to do when it was their only caller. Oh, let me put you on hold. And then, of course, Mr. Eagle would say, but if you move quickly, you can get it right now. And you'd sit there and have a call on the board. 
And what he did get to walk was like that Mo bit we play, you know, about that uh, Mo Temple and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and Gary Joe. Stevens, or whatever that guy's name. <laughs> yeah. Hey, by the way, Geldy, you're out. See, when is Geldy on again? Oh, Geldy at the Mikasuki's 9 to noon tomorrow. Woo! Aren't you excited about that? I wonder if his old friend Mifo's going to be there. Engine killer. Oh, that's right. That's the wrong engines. And it wasn't the Mikasukis that spent all of that money to try to lie to you and beat that uh, gambling thing on the uh, last amendment, was it? Uh, wasn't it? No, it was the uh, Seminole tribe, not the Mikasukis. Although, I don't know, there might have been some Mikasuki money in there. You're listening to Neil Rogers. The rest of the stars. QAM. You got I'm dying over here. When Bill O'Reilly's dialing, sure he isn't wearing pants. He'll tell you if you like your job, then you'll give him a laugh dance. And if you tell O'Reilly, you're not looking to be kissed. Hey, He'll do the pants right off you and call you an extortionist. All the factors fair and balanced, but not when he calls at night. He's looking for a lassie who likes it a little to the right. When Bill O'Reilly's horny, sure it ain't the no spin zone. So when Bill O'Reilly's dialing, you best not pick up your phone. 1246 at 560 WQM, Mad Dog from Publix. Boy, oh boy, are we uh, desperate or what? And then we got uh, Hank and uh, Eddie Kay from Calder at 4 this afternoon. Gilbert Gottfried, somebody says, the most annoying fan on earth. I hate him with several exclamation points. Okay, you got it. And Tracy and Kendall says, Rick Sanchez, who just went on there, and Rosie O'Donnell. How could we forget that bitch? Huh? I'll give you another one since we got uh, OJ on there, a sports nerd. What about Terry Bradshaw? Okay. Who represents everything dumb that we hate in America. <laughs> and it ain't an act in his case, by the way. Believe me, it's not an act. He was so stupid that when he was a quarterback with the Steelers during those stupid bowl years, that they had to give the signals on the sideline to his backup, who was Terry Hanwriting at the time, and he would flash him to, uh, to Terry. That's how stupid he was. He would, like, give him one finger, two finger. Can I tell you which finger? 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the Verizon and Singular Wireless Line. So what's the deal with Firefox now? Well, we just tell me we've got 132 points. Right. And Eric only says the first that, quarter. that puts us in our in the rankings, which makes us in the top 250, which is not bad considering that's just the first day. Well, I just looked. I checked the Alexa um, stats for them, and because I, what day was it? I told you about that Monday or Tuesday. Mm -hmm. But whatever day it was, when they got on all the uh, MSNBC and CNN, all the news networks put it on there. I guess that they had existed for a while, but they they had their official like um, debut a couple of days ago, and man, that thing has gone skyrocketing, zooming up there very nicely. So that's good, because it's, it's an alternative to Internet Explorer. You won't get any spam. You won't get any viruses. You won't get any pop-up ads. You won't have Bill Gates snooping into your uh, bedroom. And uh, it's, it's great. It's easy. It's free. Unlike that jackass that called yesterday, who's such a, what a loser, man. What an idiot. Another one of these sour, negative South Florida people. You could find a pot of gold, okay, underneath your uh, stove, and all of a sudden, well, gee, I'm going to have to pay taxes on it. You know, some crap. They could find something negative out of anything. Why is that? What is, why are there so many sour, nasty, hateful, rotten, miserable bastards? Huh? I don't know. Gravity? Is that what it is? It drags it's them all down there to the end of that yeah, peninsula? The tip. To the tip? This is the filter tip. To that reserver tip? Uh-huh. WQAM, hello. Hey. I'm eating lunch. I'm sorry. WQAM, hello. Neil. Yes? Cut my dick. No, thanks. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five. That's your people again. Trust me, both of them. All right, your crowd. Sure. That's all I know from man. Mm -hmm. Maricon, 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 Bugaro. That's it. That's the medley of their material. WQAM. Hello. Neil, what's up? 
Yes, sir. I think the Mad Dog's not doing the public scene in Fort Lauderdale. I think it's the one at Wilton Manors. No. No, you sure? Positive. No, oh. he's not going near that much fruit. Oh, right near the three, where the three roads meet, you know, that public? Yeah, uh -huh, great. WQAM, hello. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil, what's up? How you doing, Pally? Good, man. I just wanted to say that uh, I started listening to you after Stern. Yeah. Never really listened before, but I'm a huge fan, but... All the stuff that happened after the election, I listen to it every day. It just gets me pissed. Yeah. Pissed up but or fired off. I don't know what to say, man. Is it, I feel like I'm powerless. It's just yeah, we'll let you know when to come up for air, man. We'll let you know when to come up. Man, I just hope, I don't know. It just seems that every day, you th it seems like it's just going further and further downhill. Yeah. But, hey, listen, uh, you'll, you'll enjoy wearing them two-piece bathing suits next time you go to the beach. It'll be a lot of fun. Good luck, Pally. <laughs> Hang in there. Yeah, we're bringing those back, too, because we don't want to see too much male nudity on there. It's like, uh, you know, the Lord doesn't, he frowns on that. Yes, he does. So, and, and if you ever saw the uh, films of those, didn't they all have, like, stripes? Miss Kamal could probably relate. They looked like prison gear, the uh, tops that men used to wear at the beach. Yeah, well, You've I, seen that, haven't you? Sure, those uh, weird, they come down below your knees almost. <laughs> In fact, maybe the Mormons uh, know something that we don't. Maybe it's time for all good men to start wearing their magic underwears, huh? Yeah. Just make sure you wear a, a fabric that's not, like, too tight, because otherwise, you know, dangerous things can happen. And maybe that's why the Mormons uh, make so many babies all the time. Maybe they're wearing their magic underwears a little bit too tight, and they keep getting all that friction. You know what happens with that? No, what? Can't tell you. <laughs> Joyce will get upset. Let's see, Peggy, another female listener. We got Tracy, we got Peggy, that's a pair. She says, the situation we have not knowing when you come on is ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, see, here's the problem, Peggy. I don't, oh, this, this is the greatest <laughs> facts. Peggy doesn't realize it. This is the greatest facts I think I've ever read on the air. It's very short, right to the point. The situation that we have not knowing when you come on is ridiculous. Can't you let us know if Howard will be taped the day before? I hate Greg Reed. She says, oh, amen to that. And that's it. Well, see, the only problem with that is we don't know if Howard's going to be on tape the day before. Now, maybe somebody knows. I'm sure the people up there at Infinity know, but nobody has enough respect for us to bother telling us that or putting it on our schedule. So if it would have been the best of Stern, and we would have known it would have started right around 10 o'clock, we could have told you in advance, which would make a lot more sense because then the people are used to turning in at 11 o'clock. See, this idea of having a show on your radio station that nobody knows what time it starts, Greg, it doesn't effing work, okay? And if I would have had a real attorney instead of a guy that's busy ordering pizza burgers, having two young boys in the back or whatever he's doing, if I would have had that got instead of this schmuck, they would have, he would have sued their ass immediately, if not sooner. Because you don't enter into two contracts for the same period of time. It's like selling your house to two different people, okay? We're ecstatic having Stern on the air, even though it's going to turn out to be briefly, it looks like. But it would have been just fine to say, okay, you're on until 10 o'clock because that other main show that brings in the most money and has the biggest ratings, that starts at 10 o'clock in the morning, not whenever we feel like it. Or not whenever you feel like it. But no, instead of that, oh, well, look at this. I'm a big shot. I got Howard Stern on QAM. Yeah, you, you sure did it, baby. From the day he broke that egg with the worst team, man, this guy has been trying everything uh, under the sun to put the mornings back together again. It's the old Humpty Dumpty, like I keep telling you, can't do it. Can't do it. Started out by ripping uh, Joe Rose and poor Mifo and Barry Jackass column. Well, I'm not too happy with those ratings. And every time he'd come to me and ask me about it, which back in the day he actually did, I'd say, hey, if it's not broken, don't fix it, leave it alone. Everything's just fine. But no, it wasn't just fine, because he had to keep diddling and diddling. He's the diddler. That's what we got, the diddler. Greg the diddler. And he's diddled us back into a corner now, because every day now that Stern is on, he keeps threatening, well, you know, if, if we're back again tomorrow, Rob, and if we're, you know, because it's this business about, well, when will Infinity finally get tired of all the crap, and when is Sirius going to buy him out, and when is he going to leave uh, commercial radio? And then, of course, then he's going to find out, oh, guess what? Now they're censoring satellite radio pretty soon, too. Uh-oh. Better get a lot of fart sounds those first couple weeks on Sirius, sweetheart, because once they start censoring that, what, what are you going to go to? You see, you can't keep running forever. You can't keep running away forever. You know what I'm saying? Right. you got to take a step. Unless, of course, Somewhere. you go to Canada, eh? Ah, boy, am I whipped up, man. Whipped up into a frenzy. That, and what really set me off was that call yesterday, which I'm minding my own business. I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm making me a cheeseburger, okay? I'm doing a nice Atkins lunch. I'm making a cheeseburger on my stove. And then I have the phone rings. I have to turn off the stove. I have to go in there, and here is Norma Kent calling on a cell phone. 
unbeknownst to me, from a drive through at a fast food joint. And you're right, I would like to know where they have pizza burgers at a drive through Sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I can't imagine where that would be. I'll have two pizza burgers and two medium cups to order a fries and uh, some ketchup and relish for my young friend. Yeah. Probably had another runaway in the uh, passenger seat. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty in the Verizon and Singular Wireless lines. WQAM, hello. Yeah, can I get uh, two pizza burgers and a big cup of? Yeah, we got a we got a big one for you, okay? Back them. WQAM, hello. Neil. Yeah. Yes, sir. Can I add Juliana Ross waiting into that list? Is she a uh, TV, radio, or movie celebrity? No, I'm afraid you can't. Well, what is wrong with these people? What if, we didn't just oh, say, we make a list of people you hate, okay? We don't have time for that. <laughs> I mean, they, they hear the question they want to answer. Yeah. I mean, it's my fault. I haven't read the question again. The radio, TV, or movie celebrity you hate most is, is, which she ain't none of those, even though she does show her ugly puss on TV far too often. Uh, but she's a political type, a professional stick political type. Here's the uh, result so far. Got to have about 500 votes, don't we? 515. Nothing, nothing sensational. Of course, we didn't start this till well after 11. Rush Limbaugh, 204. Dr. Phil, 64. Sean Hannity, 51. Ann Coulter, she's still strong, 44. Bill O'Reilly, 44. OJ, 38. Paris Hilton, needle nose bitch, 11. Miss Kamal, hey, same person, I think. Miss Kamal, 11. Only she's got the money. Arnold, 8. Dan Labastard, 8. Nine, 7. Nice going, Eric. He put the S in Dan Labastard. He put the S in it. Robert Novak. Crossfire! He's got seven. Will Smith, four. Richard Gere's got four. Oh, I haven't played a Richard Gere bit yet. Can we play that? Sure. P. Diddy, three. Jim Rome. Romy's got three. Little boy. He sounds about three. Rosie, and of course, the sports nerds, they just love Romy. Even the ones on this station, they think, oh, he's, uh, yeah. he's crap, is what he is. He's a silly person. Did you ever see him on TV? No. If you think he sounds silly, he looks so silly, too. He's got that silly little mustache. I mean, he's a silly person. Doesn't he have a mustache, Josh? Uh, he's got the goatee. Oh, that's right. They're well, the same difference. He's got a little fuzz. Rosie O'Donnell, too. Rick Sanchez, too. Joe Scarborough, spelled poorly, too. Phil Henry's got a pair. Or at least he used to. Ray Romano's got one. One for Geraldo. Tucker, Mother Tucker Carlson with his silly little bow tie. Real pansy. He's got one. David Spade's got one. And Terry Bradshaw, I don't have any yet. Maybe I'll change my vote. You're listening to Neil Rogers. Exclusively on 560 QAM. How's Bronson, you son of a bitch? Well, my wish was granted. And I'm sure going to miss listening to the Neil Rogers Fair and Balanced Woman Two Hour, you son of a bitch. Welcome. Richard, you're alone. I hate the weigh-in, brothers. The weigh-in, uh, weigh somebody says. Now, does that include Damon weigh-ins? I would imagine. Yeah. Well, that's bad. Now, how can we put the weigh-in brothers on there? Like, uh, how many of them are there? About 30, 30 man. <laughs> no, we can't, we can't put a whole family on there, okay? We don't want to develop a family feud. But I understand what you're saying. They make too many movies. They're, they're everywhere, like Tom Hanks. We ought to put Tom Hanks on there, too. I think he deserves yeah, to be Yeah, why on not? There. I'd vote for him. Can't stand him. He just, he's become, uh, I, I don't know, he's just like a parody of himself. He's just a silly person. 
who takes himself. See, I, I don't, I can't deal with people who take themselves real seriously. I mean, one thing about this show, never accuse us of taking ourselves seriously, because we know we're just like window dressing, okay, in between the scores. In between the spores. The spores. CBS apologized Thursday for breaking into its primetime drama, CSI New York, for a special report on Palestinian leader Yasser Amafart's death, blaming an overly aggressive producer. See, CBS, they've got their man just sucking wind. Now, they're apologizing for everything. If they fart the wrong flavor, the CBS eye starts tearing up. The 10.55 p.m. Uh, report on Wednesday cut off the ending of the popular forensics drama, prompting a cascade of viewer complaints. You cut off my show, you jackass! The network said the CSI New York episode will be repeated in its entirety 10 p.m. tonight. The report came just five minutes before local news broadcasts in the East and Midwest. ABC and NBC waited for the local news to break the story in the West. NBC ran a crawl with the news at the bottom of the screen. That sure makes sense to me. An overly aggressive CBS News producer jumped the gun with a report that should have been offered to local stations for their late news, the network said in a statement. We sincerely regret the error. CBS News spokeswoman Sandy Janelius declined to identify the producer to say whether the person faces disciplinary action. In other words, whether he's going to be fired at him, or she, or it. That'll teach them to be screwing around, right? Right. Get them CBS bastards goose-stepping back in line before they show any more of that lefty pinko propaganda. Five six seven oh five sixty. We got Jim Maddich at a Publix today. That's how desperate we are to get a little revenue in here. We got Hank and Eddie K at Calder at four, and then the big oh! at seven. Speaking of desperate, WQAM. Hello. Hey Neil. Yes sir. I got somebody for the poll. Okay. Carrot top. Carrot top's good. Okay, he'll go zooming to the top of the list every time we do this. How many times have we done this poll? About thirty, man. Well, that's just this month. Well, we could do it once a month. Why? There's enough hate to go around. Now, nah, we better we do other kind of hate. You know, hate uh, politician you hate. Racial hate. Relative you hate. What racial group do you hate? What ethnic group? What religious group do you hate? What broadcaster do you hate? What uh, lunch or meat do you hate? Right? Right. Bologna. Yeah, yeah. Slicing that bologna like that press conference. Oh, this has been some week, man. Let me tell you. This has been some week. We get stiffed with that press conference the other day, which was nothing but a bunch of sliced bologna, to quote the uh, humper. <laughs> yeah, so they were slicing bologna and handing it out like crazy. And they were lying through their teeth about one step, step aside. Right. Step on this, sweetheart. He got fired at it. But in Mr. H's world, nobody ever gets fired at it because, uh, you know, Mr. H wants to put out that. I, I don't understand it either because here's a guy that doesn't care about PR, that told the public to stick it where the moon don't shine, that he's in it for the uh, uh, money and not the fans, and yet, oh, uh, he, he, you know, he's uh, sensitive, Mr. Bald-Headed Geek. You know what I'm going to play? The one that goes, da 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 Wayne Heisinger, such a da. Yeah, I'm going to play that. Yeah, he yeah. sure is. A flame he's not us. He really is. Idi Amin Dada was never like you, man. A butcherer. <laughs> we got screwed with that deal. We screwed up that show. We were on for 20 minutes and then off for a half an hour. And now today we wind up with, surprise, Stern's not on live today. It's another tape. It's another one of bogus best of tapes. So you guys come on like uh, two or three minutes after 10 o'clock. Totally, I mean, like out of the blue you hit me with that. When did, when did you find out about it? The tape? Yeah. When I walked in. <laughs> yeah. And who told you? Duff. Well, when the hell did she find out about it? I don't know. No, probably didn't know. Oh, he probably was, didn't I, know until he saw, you know, came in. Now, let me ask you something. When they run the tapes, don't, can't we just go back and get the original tape so we don't have to sit there with his finger on it the whole uh, five hours or whatever it is, four hours? WQAM, hello. Although he probably wanted to dump a lot more stuff he missed the first time. QAM, hello. Hey, Neil, you know who I hate the most? Steve Phillips. I Who's hate that? him as Mets GM, and I hate him now on TV. What does he do? He, he's on the sports center a lot of times. They have okay. him on with the baseball and stuff. I'll take your word for it. Okay, Steve Phillips, I have no idea who that is. Who is he, Josh? He's not on sports center. He's Steve? what? Steve Phillips? I've never heard of him. I don't either. Oh, don't put him on. I, I think he's talking about Phil Phillips. Remember Sea of Love, Phil Phillips? No. I do. Oh, George Wood. You don't remember the original Sea of Love by Phil Phillips? Oh, Sea of Love, yeah. Yeah. Not by the Honey Drippers? Right. How many times have they remade that one? About 30, man. WQAM, hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, the, the pizza burger is a checkers, and it's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Are you sure that Norm was eating that checkers or something that rhymes with checkers? <laughs> Fleckers? No. 
Double deckers. <laughs> Double deckers, right. Yeah. What a what a lemming man. What a loser. What a joke. They're laughing at you, man. That's what they're doing. They're all laughing at you. That's right. I was hoping you'd play that several times. That's what they do. They laugh at you. Oh, but he's in tight with Joyce, and he's going to go out. He's going to go to Bruce Beasley, and he's going to talk to this one. And they just like, who the hell do you think you are, man? Don't be messing with Greg Reed. Just, like the, water, just like the water Nazi says, I'm going to go to Greg Reed. Yeah, big deal. Okay, we're really impressed, bitch. Oh, that's right. That's suspendable, what I just said there. Like I said, bitch. WQAM, hello. Yeah, I'd like to speak to Neil. Speaking. Yes, how you doing, Neil? Um, I want to ask somebody to, to your poll. Yes. Uh, Oprah Winfrey. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, she's, you know, she sure had a big impact on this election, too. Not silly ass. Oprah. Bitch. Yeah. I know. You want me to play that thing again about Oprah's giveaways. Everybody gets a, uh, you know, oh, hell, people help her monkey. Everybody gets a liver. Everybody gets, everybody gets screwed and tattooed. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. I don't, I don't have an individual, but I have a, a, a bank. Bank of America. Hello. Okay, great. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that next week. Which bank you hate the most? Okay, we'll do that in our, in our hate series here on the Neil Rogers Show. Yeah, let's do a series of hate shows. Get probably an 80 share yeah. in this town. We hate everybody. Bye. Yeah, I, I know. I'm going to go to Greg Reed. WQAM, hello. I'm on Bennett. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil, how's it going? I heard earlier, your mama, pal. Yes, sir. Yeah, earlier you were talking about uh, the old Yentas on the radio and uh, Don Agony and Greg Budello on that JNA, followed by Skipper Chuck. So what a yeah, lineup the there. Yeah, I'm hearing though, is that Budello's back off the air again for personal reasons is what I read in Tommy Dickens' column, I believe. Well, you know, he was chasing that white line down the football field. That's his yeah. problem. And but, it just uh, kept disappearing, right. Yeah, I hate Paul Casanova. Okay, that's the one, Castronova, Mr. Originality, who's doing the old Sofa King bit, which we had a couple of spy reports from both his listeners this week. Oh, brother. That, that's a good one to hate. I don't hate him. I just, uh, I just, oh, he's just, he, like, he don't even exist to me. He's just like a, like a wart, you know? Wart's new. Or like a, like a hemorrhoid that keeps, like, popping up every now and then. Just when you think it goes away, it keeps popping back up again. Now, let's see, when's that next, it's the 12th of November, when's that next trend coming out? Maybe somebody to the left of Attila the Hung got some diaries this time, which we can only hope, because that last one, that uh, hurricane mm -hmm. one, uh, when only right-wingers got the diaries, and so Stern got, uh, although, it, well, we'll see, you know, we'll see how many people choose to listen to Stern, the butchered-up version that we put on here, while as long as it lasts, and if, uh, whatever. See, if you just stop saying that. Oh, that's right, that's right, it's like, it's like Chuck Meyer again with right. a great morning show with all those uh, scintillating phone interviews. If I would be a lot more supportive, they would listen. No. Not. Last guy I worked for like that was Tim Williams, that jackass at the Zeta. Oh, if you'd be more positive about our music, people would listen. No, they don't like the music. Don't you understand, Tim? No matter what I say, you can't, you can't put dog poop on the table and tell the public it's, uh, it's ribeye steak, okay? They're not buying it. They're not eating it. They're not they're liking it. They don't want no part of it. They can smell it from a million miles away. Tim, you idiot. Tim Williams is an idiot, by the way. One of many I've worked for. Although I'll tell you, this current crowd, woo-wee, man. They are something else. They talk about the eve of destruction. They just keep, I mean, just self-immolating. And it's like giving a little kid a, a lighter, you know? And he keeps setting himself on fire and setting the house on fire. And then that's what these, this crowd does. They huff and puff and they blow the house down. Twelve minutes after one at 560 WQAM. Are you expecting guests this Thanksgiving? It's not the turkey that always makes the meal special. It's the people. Right. Make sure your guests sleep just as comfortably as you do by calling Dial a Mattress at 1-800-MATTRESS. Whether they plan weeks in advance or show up without warning, you can get them just the right mattress the very same day. In fact, sometimes when they show up without warning, you open the door and they go, Hoo like that. Don't see that movie, by the way. George, you'll hate it. Don't worry. Anyway, now when you call 1-800-MATTRESS, you'll save an additional 20% on select models while supplies last. You'll choose from the top names in the universe. They got them all. Sealy, Serta, Simmons, King Coral, Stearns and & Foster, and even Tempur-Pedic. 
When you call 1-800-MATTRESS, you'll get same-day delivery, and the same deal applies I've been telling you about for a very long time. You still pick the date and two-hour window, the time for delivery, to fit your schedule when it's convenient for you and you're going to be there. How do you like that? Dollar Mattress continues to be very proud, and why not, of their 99.7% on-time record. They're ranked number one in customer satisfaction. They were winners of the 2004 Better Business Bureau Local Torch of Excellence Award. So when it comes to getting you a great night's sleep, as far as Dollar Mattress is concerned, I have one question to ask. What's not to like? I've been using them for years, and once you use them the first time, you realize this is the only intelligent way to buy you a great name brand bed and unbeatable price. 1-800-MATTRESS. Check them online if you like at mattress.com. But if you make that easy call right now, they can be there before the end of the day. 1-800-M-A-T-T-R-E-S. You are listening to Neil Rogers. Exclusively on 560. Get and stick it. You talk about sucking up, you know, it's like slapping your wife and then trying to like kissy kissy because you want some, because you want some. What do you say? About ten years too late, yeah, back when things were great. Clinton was president, OJ was innocent, but we could still see friends and give us ten bucks. Are you sure? You know Mariah and Whitney, they beat the pants off Britney. No. We still had some geezers, but also there was Weezer and we had Sophie B. Hawkins. Yes, she was good for talking. I wonder if she survived past 19, 19, 1995. Well, don't let me forget to tape Guiding Light today because I'm going to go out to lunch, but i got to see that. I, I don't even watch it anymore, but they have this real psychotic episode on now. They must be desperate for ratings. Well, don't forget to tape it. Oh. On your way to get some pizza burgers. At 3 p.m. I'm going to go to Checkers and get some pizza burgers. Maybe I'll go out and get something that rhymes with Checkers. Chubby? Maybe. maybe. Here's one that says, hey, Neil, how can you forget? Leave out. Mo Howard David. It. Well, out of sight, out of mind. Oh, right? do, 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 do. Uh, we'll get him on there for you. You got him on there, Mo? See, back in the day when he was on, when we had him to push around and uh, he was pushing back, uh, then he would get a lot of votes. But now he's, uh, I don't know, small potatoes. And that caller the other day that was ripping him for trying to make the games exciting, you know, getting excited. Uh, what, what would you, you know, if he wasn't doing that, you'd say, well, here's a guy that just gave up already. It sounds like he's in a coma. Uh, you know, it's just gratuitous. Those people are just suck-ups that call it crap like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Just because we, they know that everybody hates him like poison. There's another Greg Reed, uh, but that was another really great move, was Mo Howard David. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, what a, what, a, what a tremendous record of accomplishment over the last couple of years, you know what? And then, of course, there was always our good close friend. I'm going to kick his ass, and then I'll steal his toupee. Yeah, that created so much tourist. And we're still paying a, a hell of a price for that uh, enterprise, you know? As much as a lot of you people loved and coveted and wanted it, but, oh, brother, if you only knew. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the Verizon and singular wireless line. I'll tell you who we need. Who? Okay. Who? The last name. That's who we need. He's my favorite morning show. I just said that, you know. Because it's there. WQAM, hello. QAM. There's somebody there, I think. Hello? Hello? <laughs> WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil, how are you? Okay. Biggest douchebag in television. Ah, see, there he goes, right off the bat. Can't say that, man. I know it comes as a shock to you. We can't say the D-bag word. Right. It's you the clown. brave new world. That's right. It's a cowardly new world is what it is. And Joyce will come there and spank the crap out of you. You might enjoy it. Ow! Yeah. See, uh, that guy never even got beyond uh, like two, three words. And that was the end of him. You can't say it, schmuck. You can say schmuck, but you can't say D-bag. You can say defo or mofo, but you can't say what you said. Shame on you. I'm going to report him to Roland Colin and Michael Powell. How do you like that? WQAM, hello. 
Yeah, those pizza burgers are delicious. That's a Fernanda cheese. Fernanda, my... <laughs> WQAM, hello. Can you please some, some Godfather sound bite? WQAM, hello. Here's a message for Joyce. Give us our farts! W- <laughs> WQAM. Hey, Neil, how are you doing? Okay. Hey, you were talking about that uh, little uh, twerp, uh, Jim Rome, earlier. Yeah, tw- twerp is a good word for him. He's the one that was bit slapped by Jim Everett. Was he really? Yeah, do you remember that? He was interviewing no. Jim Everett. He was calling him Chris Everett. He said, you did it one more time, I'm going to hit you, and he did it, and he got him yeah. knocking oh, out I love the it. I wish I had to see. I had to pay 100 bucks to see so that. It was about 10 years ago. Oh. Jim Everett was the quarterback for the uh, L.A. Uh, Rams. Right. Yeah, anyway, he slapped, uh, he slapped Jim Rome. Beauty. He probably liked it. Yeah, 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 he got back up and asked for more. Man, another. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. Well, thanks for the good news, Pally. How do you like that? I didn't know he, uh, she got bitch slapped, old Romy. Yeah, oh, yeah, pretty Jim good. Rome. He's, uh, was it, did you see it? Yeah, he actually, he was on a show and he uh, flipped the desk and uh, gave it to him. Nice. He flipped the desk and uh, <laughs> bitch slapped her. Oh, that, oh, man, I want to see the tape of that, please. <clears throat> Cracker, please, I got to see that. Romy getting it. Man. Five six seven oh five sixty. How come we never see any of the good stuff? You know, I mean, all this business about Janet Jackson, that little tiny bit of booby. You know, now I want to see Jim Rome get bitch slapped by Betsy Everett. WQAM. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Bill Kamal Killer. Uh, WQAM. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, someone's been bugging me. Ursus Vogue got kicked off the air. You know, it defends uh, Trump Zimper. Because he wouldn't do a radio show? Yeah. Well, get to do the same thing to Mo? Can his ass? What, what do you mean by that? He's on the payroll. He's got a contract, man. See, Zimfer, Zimfer never worked for, for the station. He worked for the Dolphin organization. Ah. So uh, I still hate him anyway. Okay, me too. Whoever he's talking about. Not Zimfer. Zimper was a good guy. He might have his own uh, P's and Q's. In fact, we saw him so infrequently that when he came in, a couple at IOD a couple of times, I didn't know who he was. It was embarrassing, you know. Because he was very friendly and like, how how you doing? All I I know, I like, exactly. That's what I kept thinking. You know, in fact, I, I used to think it was Jim Schuyler. You ever see them together? No, but they don't. Same thing. Same person. Same glasses. WQAM. Hello. How about that Kobe Bryant suck ass uh, Jim Gray? Oh yeah, Jim Gray, who did that scintillating interview with Pete Rose. Right. Okay, Jim yeah. Gray. There's a good one for you. Thank you. You got him, Jim Gray. He's got him. Earl Rhymes Gray. with. Fay, how's Bill Fay doing? Where's he driving these days? Who? Bill Fay. You know, his wife actually called me up one time years ago to thank me for nice things I said about him. That's when I was foolish enough to talk about harness racing on the air. It had no audience. Next thing, it'll be a hockey show. <laughs> Let's get Rimmer on there for a hockey show, not. I'll call him right now. Boy, you're. Oh, how could I possibly? It's your fault, by the way, for letting me do that. I know. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil, just letting you know that that clip that you were talking about uh, is available on the internet, uh, Jim Rome's Web. Yeah, where do I find it? All right, cool. Where? Oh, on the internet. I don't know exactly. You should I do a search? I think it's called Sportscaster Slap. Sportscaster like Slap. It. I'll be slapping it right after the show. Thanks, Pally. Oh, I can't wait to see that. Sportscaster Slap, baby. Ow! Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. That must have been a beautiful end. If anybody deserves it. And I'll say it again to people on this day. Oh, no. Jim Rome, he's legendary in the sports. Field. Yeah, you're so, you guys are all got your own little cluster fork going, man. You're all in bed together, the whole bunch of you. Even the people I like there, they're still, it's, a, it's like an illness with them. God forbid they should ever speak ill of any of their own ilk. You know what I'm saying? So like, like the uh, priest thing, same deal. WQAM, hello. Yeah, Neil. Yes, sir. Yeah, the classic thing about that Jim Rome thing is with this. He, he, the right before he said it, he kind of smiled at him, and he said, Hey, call me that again, and I'm going to fly over the table. Actually, he goes, All right there, Chrissy. And he flew over the table. It was a funny. You have to see it. It's, and actually, it's on ESPN under an archival. If you do, I think it is called Sportscaster Slap. And on the other, on the poll, I cannot believe you forgot Wolf Blitzkrieg if he's not on there yet. Oh, yeah. Speaking of getting slapped, I'd like to slap that bitch. He, he does need it. Neil, happy birthday. And uh, just one thing Andy Moss, you are a flaming, I can't say it, people. Okay, you. okay, get on here. Oh, they're back to that again with Andy Moss. Oh, not him again. Oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> You know, it's just, see, this is the problem when you're just on the same little market, on the same little station, on the same, you know, year after year after year. We need to branch out a little bit, Norma. That's what we need to do, branch out. Checkers today, Wendy's tomorrow. 
Krispy Kreme on uh, Monday. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Branch it out a little bit, sweetheart. And don't you dare call here while I'm... I, I think I better go out to lunch. I'll take that uh, guiding light. It's going to be the, like the climactic episode today because they're all meeting at... Uh, he's telling everybody a different story about where he's kidnapped the kids and he's taking them away. Philip's going over the deep end again. <laughs> well, that's what happens to you when you get old enough to that all the skin is like drawn over your face and it gets like you look like a mm. walking uh, skull and bones. That's what he looks like now. Philip Spaulding. Oh, did we have on the beat the curtain the other day? We had uh, Jill Allen and Spaulding. See right. how that goes around? Uh-huh. I told you all of these things tied in together. Haven't I always told you that? Mm-hmm. Don't believe it. 26 after 1 at 560. Boy, it seems like we've been on a long time today, man. Holy moly. You get out right. of practice with this crap. Mm-hmm. Jesus K. Christ. Oh, you know, make up your mind already, Greg. You want a four-hour show? You want a three-hour show? What do you want, huh? Jesus Christ already. Hey, if you have guests coming to town for the holidays, are you wondering what to do with that dirty old carpeting in your home? Now is the time to get rid of that carpet and replace it with laminate or hardwood flooring from Laminate Designs. That's right. Visit Laminate Designs, showroom at 8280 State Road 84 in Davie, and there you can choose from over 300 samples on display. Laminate Designs can have your beautiful new floor professionally installed in about a week or less. Call 1-877-8-LAMINATE to set up a free, no-obligation in-home estimate for you. Laminate Designs carry all the top well-known lines, including Wilson Art, Quick Step, and Pergo. If you call today and set up an appointment for your free estimate, tell them you want the WQM discount for an additional 10% off their already low, unbeatable installation price. Laminate Designs, you'll find them in Davie, just off I-595, between Pine Island Road and University Drive. The showroom is open Monday through 8, Laminate. That's L-A-M-I-N-A-T-E. That's 1-877-8-LAMINATE for Laminate Designs, the flooring company where service comes first. You are listening to Neil Rogers exclusively on Boys.com. That's where well, I, I got it. it. There are a whole, whole bunch of places you can find it, but that's just great. Is, um, <laughs> yeah. If you say it one more time, I'm going to come across that. If you want to take a station break, uh, and there's that little boy, Jimmy Rome, you know, and he just throws the table down on him and just jumps across the, where the table was and just pummels Jimmy Rome to the ground. All the, all the crew are coming out to drag him off his head. It's a beautiful thing. I love it. I may just watch that all weekend on an endless loop, you know if anybody deserves it, there's one of them, a little wise-ass, snot-nosed punk. And not only that, but if you could read all of the negatory stuff, that's for boy, they, they hate him like poison. The radio, TV, or movie celebrity I hate the most is Rush Limbaugh, 246. Nobody can touch that Rush. Dr. Phil, 71. Sean Hannity, 59. And Coulter, 59. Same person. Bill O'Reilly, 56. OJ's got 42, and then it's way down to Miss Kamal. She's got 14. Uh oh, 14 was an unlucky number last time. You better watch it, Miss Kamal. See what I told you? All these things, there's no coincidences in this world. I wonder if they ever went through the checkers drive through together. Rick Sanchez, it doesn't. Bob Novak, 11. He's on crossfire. He's tied with Paris Hilton, 11. Rosie O'Donnell and Dan Labaster each have 10. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's got eight. Jim Rome's got six. I bet you get a lot more once a lot of you people see that uh, video. 
of Chrissy Everett knocking him down. Will Smith, six. Phil Henry's got four. Richard Gere, four. Oprah, three. G Geraldo's got three. Geraldo. Uh, P. Diddy's got three. Carrot Top, two. Tucker Carlson's got two. Joe Scarborough's two. Wolf Litzkrieg's only got one. I'm amazed at that. Ray Romano's got one. David Spade's gone. I'll give you another one. There's a bunch of people don't have any yet. But I'll give you one. I'd like to hit her with a two-by-four. Soledad O'Brien. Ooh, yeah. If she isn't the most silly little bubbly little piece of crap. She's what's wrong with the news on so-called news on TV in America, okay? Right there. A silly little bubbly, perky little simpleton. Bubblehead. People have bobblehead dolls. How about we get a bubblehead of uh, Soledad? Well, Soledad, you know, what an idiot. And I'll tell you right behind her, and you can put him on there, too, is Bill Hummer, Miss Hummer. I think he's a self-hating <laughs> if you ask me. Well, is it true that liberalism is dead in American eyes? Yeah, right. See you in the closet, Miss Hemmer. And by the way, let your hem down a little bit. People are starting to talk. Wearing them short skirts. WQAM, hello. Yeah, is this Neil? Yes, sir. Uh, Neil, I was calling because uh, last night they had uh, on uh, Channel 10 Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, no kidding. And they had a... Uh, yeah, we know all about it, okay? We know all about it. WQAM, hello. Not there. WQAM, hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Have you heard we're winning the war on terrorism? All right. And, and you know how we're doing it? How are we doing that? Uh, Bush's cronies are going uh, all through Broward County taking little marijuana pipes off the shelf. Yeah. In the, na in the name of the Patriot Act. All That's right. Excellent, man. I mean, evangelical Christians will be delighted. We are f we're not only fighting terrorism, but we're fighting the cannabis plant. It's amazing. Yeah, not only that, maybe we can go over to the Indians and smoke the peace pipe with them, huh? Jesus, in the... In the name of the Lord, what's going on? <laughs> See, at the border, eh? we got some really good crap up here, okay? We'll give you, uh, hook you up with some good Schmidt. In fact, just walk out on the street. You can smell it wafting through the streets. 5670560, oh, pound 560 in the Verizon and singular wireless lines. All you people from the red states not welcome here in Canada, eh? Just stay where the hell you are. You know that even in the red states, in many of the bigger cities like San Luis in Missouri, and in, in some of them states where they actually have big cities, that Kerry won in there. See, the problem with Kerry was that he was a waffler. That was the problem. And uh, this thing with Iraq, well, it's kind of hard to <laughs> hard to hold it against uh, the opponent, against the man who's responsible for it when you haven't got any different ID. You know, like, well, uh, I've got a better plan. A better plan to do the same thing. As opposed to being honest right from the beginning like Howard Dean saying, we had no business being there. It's all based on a pack of lies. You're a freaking liar. And really, I guarantee you that if Dean would have, well, he would have won it by 20 points, they wouldn't have been able to fix it. I, I right. bet you Greg's life on it right now. Don't you agree? He wouldn't have let them fix it. He would have kicked their ass, man. He'd have held their feet to the fire instead of this, well, uh, I voted for it. Uh, uh, first I was against it, and then I was for it, and then I was against it again. And I was, uh, well, you know, for it. And I, you know, he just didn't articulate any kind of an alternative on the mess in Iraq. And now come to find out all these post-election polls they're taking, it wasn't moral values that the uh, majority, I mean, that was that 22%, but the majority of people were interested in something else like this mess in Iraq and killing all these innocent people, including our own. That's the most important thing they were. And how come again we just got through seeing, yes, sir, I'm a fart with his body in that tisket and tasket that's in a draped casket. How come we see that? But we can't see American people coming back in caskets because it's bad for the Bush crowd. And let me say again, you people at CNN, you wouldn't know a ball if somebody stuck it in your face. You're listening to Neil Rogers. QAM. Friday, you bastard. Come on, take the oath, baby, let's hear Carla. No, she can't stonewall any longer. Feel the pressure of Congress getting stronger. Don't you fight, testify, Carla, leave the right.
123 at 7 feet old. So don't forget, Mad Dog will be squeezing the fresh fruit and publishing for Lauderdale at the 2. And then we got the Humper and Eddie K of Calder at 4. The Big oh. at 7 o'clock. And then Eddie K again at 10. By the way, we want to thank management for the tremendous, now that we got Stern on the station and uh, our show back-to-back, tremendous promotional campaign <laughs> for the billboards and TV ads and newspapers. It's just, it really makes you feel that uh, there is hope at the light at the end of the tunnel. You know what I'm saying? What are you saying? I don't know. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the Verizon and Singular Wireless Lines. I'm hallucinating again. You know, those mushrooms are due to you every time. Mm, WQAN, hello. Hey, Neil. Yeah. Yes, going? sir. Yeah, I got some privileged information. Uh, I don't know if you remember a couple of weeks ago or less uh, about a bomb scare. They put a bomb under a guy's car, supposedly. Yeah, that in Hollywood, connected. yes. Yeah, it was no bomb. It was a homing device that a Homeland Security put under there, and the super mechanic didn't know what it was, so he called the bomb squad, and the FBI got there at the same time and said, oh, well, we got to make up some story. And uh, It was a homo device? Probably they were tracking it as it went through the uh, drive through with checkers, it would seem to me. They, uh, they stick those homo devices under certain cars because they know that sooner or later it's going to be greater. Right? Checkers. I wonder how right. Chubby's feeling, you Are know? Are those called blowjack devices? 5670560. Pound 560 on the Verizon and Singular Wireless Lines. Is that what they call Chubby Checker? WQAM, hello. WQAM, hello. And uh, J-Lo and Ben Affleck. Okay, that's a good pair. Oh, yeah. Joined at the lip. And that's as close as they're ever going to get, those two. Talk about the Hollywood closet. You got J-Lo on there and Ben Affleck. I don't know if we can play that thing anymore. No. Better not. No. Although I do like the Affleck ducks, the yogi spot with the uh, Affleck duck. Have you seen that? Mm-hmm. That's cute. And the duck just goes, ah! like that. You would have thought he'd been working at QM for a couple hours. Exa- your exasperation station. WQAM, hello. QAM. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, any chance of talking to the great one? You're speaking to him right now, the great oh. one. Oh, yeah. okay. Um... I just uh, I just get wanted to get your comment. Now, what do we do for the next four years then? You're listening. I'm sorry. Are you listening carefully? Yes. There you go. There you go. Turn up your radio. That's it. That's what you do the next four years. Those of you who are want to stay in the states, especially in the red states, I'd at least be making a move to the blue states. It'd be good. Okay, you'd be feeling mighty blue, but less blue than right now. Or maybe you just want to go through the drive-thru at Checkers, where they have those really nifty pizza burgers. I hear they suck. WQA, QAM, hello. Happy Friday, Neil. Back to you, sir. Hey, Neil, by any chance when your agent was going through that drive-thru yesterday or today, did he say, get the junior, honey? <laughs> hello. Is there a comment? Hi, Q- Neil. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Neil. Listen, I just wanted to tell you that I'm a proud female listener. And well, you're the one. Yeah, that's right. And I wanted to tell you how much I hate Bill O'Reilly, and I can't believe that he's number five on the poll. Is he really? Yeah, I would think he would be at least number two behind Rush, if not ahead of Rush. I'm really surprised. No, no, he's small potatoes. Nobody, uh, this crowd doesn't pay any attention to Bill O'Reilly, including me. I mean, other than when he's making obscene phone calls. We just, uh, <laughs> small potatoes. All right, well, i got to get back to work. I just wanted to say I love you. You're the best, and keep it up. I listen to you every lunch break. Thanks, sweetheart. See you. Take care. I, don't, I can't get back on my uh, page here. Are you having any problem with our website all of a sudden? Yes. What's going on with that now, Eric? We better get this uh, deal straightened out before we uh, get out of here, because I'm clicking and re-clicking and refreshing, and uh, nothing is happening, Eric. What's going on there? So anyway, did I tell you the credit union downstairs was robbed? Yeah, and? Oh, nothing. There's uh, quite a little to do here during the show. What do you mean by that? Well, there was all kinds of hysteria. You know, there were some people down there, people on their way down there, our people. What does that have to do with my website? Nothing. Just uh, chatting while we're waiting for it to come up. As long as they didn't come upstairs and uh, interfere with our very important ongoings at Power 96 and QAM, why do we care about the uh, stupid-ass credit uh, bureau downstairs? Because it's here. Mostly a bunch of deadbeats going down there anyway. That's a government credit union. Is it really? I don't know. I'm talking about the people going in there, not the ones uh, running it. No, I know. Although they might be, too. I don't know. Never talked to him. There were some. Uh, now, what about the people on the second floor? Wasn't that like a dental, uh, dental insurance uh, like uh, place? Yeah, we're not getting onto our website at all here, yeah. Eric. Is, is Eric in the chat room with you? Is he like yeah, checking this out? Yeah, he's looking into it. He's looking into it. Oh boy! Rectum. What about our problem? WQAM. Hello. Hey, Valley. Happy Friday to you. And back to you. 
Thanks, man. Uh, listen, I just, you know, wanted to uh, say that we appreciate the show, and, uh, you, you know, it's unfortunate, it's kind of disheartening that you got so many of those uh, Yahoo callers that call in, and, you know. Oh, yeah, that's something, up, you know? that's something really brand new. <laughs> just keep your chin up, Neil. I love your show. Okay, thanks, pal. Good he said chin is what he said. Kind of a little careless. Oh, look at that. We just got it back. See, it was on Eric's end. I guarantee you that. It was something with Eric. He said we got attacked again. Oh, we got attacked again. Well, how did he uh, solve that problem so quick? He has days. He has days. Okay. All you attackers out there, Eric's going to come and he's going to like give you a little pinch if you don't watch it. A little pinch between your cheek and gum. WQAM, hello. Neil the Winder. Yeah, that's me. Okay, thanks for listening, by the way, Schmuck. WQAM, hello. I missed my candy cane. WQAM, hello. How you doing, Neil? Okay, Pally. Hey, uh, I got two things to tell you about Bush. You know what Bush has got? He's got more old values. Yeah, more old values. More old values. Yeah. And he's and he's got DAD. Not dad, but the deficit attention disorder. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks for the good news. WQAM, hello. Hey, can we put uh, Brian Norcross on that list? You haven't seen him in a while. Yeah, we sure, yeah, we sure can. He's kind of out of the spotlight got stolen by Miss Kamala for a couple of weeks. We'll get Miss Norcross on there, okay? He's the he's the only weather fairy on the loose at the moment. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. The Grizzly. WQAM, hello. Yes, hey, Bill O'Reilly. Uh, I got a question. How many people does it take? How many? Uh... WQAM, hello. Hey, uh, put Kelly Ripa on that list. She she makes me ill, physically ill. She, and anybody thinks that she's attractive, which George does, she's got the nastiest face. I'm, I'm telling you right, right now, I don't care what you say. She's ugly, care. man. We, we don't care. And the heterosexual males of the world don't care what you say. Hey, either. I don't care about your your version of heterosexual males. Believe me, most <laughs> of the heterosexual males have got better taste than Kelly freaking Ripo, okay? Uh -huh. If she was walking in a damn Dayland mall and you were sitting 15 feet away and she wasn't on television, you wouldn't look at her twice, well, okay? But she's a piece of turd. So She's a like piece that. of turd. All right. She's nothing. Okay. But then again, you thought uh, Jill Ann Spaulding was hot, too. So what does that do? That's what you said to me. I thought she had big boobs. That's all I said. You thought Josephine Baker was hot. Well, she's dead. No, I didn't. Yeah. I said uh, she was well, naked maybe, maybe lukewarm a little bit, huh? Just so stick her ass in the truck next time you're driving through checkers and see what happens. It's the Howard Stern Show. Neil Rogers, mornings and midday. And sports around the clock. From 560 to 8 a.m. Friday, you bastard. Well, I guess this must be next on her list. Cause no J-Lo. Wants to be a bully. That would be cool, Bobby. But she's confused. What are you talking about? The word she's misused. I don't misuse the word. What are you talking about, Bobby? She thinks it's about her body. Yeah, I want to be a buddy. A buddy. Only a pet story. It's boring, Bobby. Kind of like Madonna. You think my ball of big reading books? Reading books by the Dalai Lama. Dalai Lama, the Dalai Lama. You like my book? I hope it's no from. There's no from, Papi. It's a celebrity song. It's no snob, Papi. No snob. No snob. Because the boys don't want this love. Of course they do. They want the bus. The boys love my bus. And she wants to rub Buddha's tummy. I love the big fat man. I love to rub the tummy. You like my bus? But we hear Travolta's this. Hey, I don't even know Jan Travolta, Papi. So forget about it. Just like he and his wife, Kelly. They always call me all the time and only say Kelly, you know. They want her to be yeah, check it out. a Scientologist. I want to be a buddy. I'm not a Scientologist. Jan goes, put she jump over with this. Get out of here, Jeff. You like my butt, Papi? 157 at 560. Everybody was wearing poppies here this week because it was Remembrance Day yesterday. Veterans Day in the U.S. Remembrance Day in Canada, eh? Remember? No. Bastard. Weren't you wearing your I poppy? I think that'd be big in uh, your community, you know what I mean? That's in poppy. In the poppy community? I wonder how it's uh, going over in the checkers community. <laughs> oh, they got pizza burgers at checkers, man. Somebody uh, says, I hate Barbara Walters. How did we not put her on there? Okay? Uh, in fact, you probably right. would have to change your vote, right? 
I think she's a lot more attractive than Kelly Ripa. You would. Not. I just said that to uh, aggravate, and I'm sure I did. Anyway, here's the way it's Stop. going so far. Oh, and you know what we ought to do if we haven't done it already? We ought to put a link on our website to the, get a whole bunch of hits over the weekend. People that haven't seen Jim Rome get bitch slapped by, Jim Everett, by Chrissy Everett. Don't you think? Okay. Maybe, you know, you've got, I don't know which uh, link you had, because it's all over the damn Internet. It's everywhere. I'll say the other In fact, you go just to the New York Times, and all of a sudden there's uh, Jim Rome getting, like, bitch slapped. Yeah, I love it. It's a great thing. Huh? I'll send you right. the video. Did you watch it in its entirety? Absolutely. And wasn't it most entertaining, amusing, That's and terrible. enjoyable? <laughs> oh, man. Mr. Little Big Shot there. Mr. Pipsqueak, okay, Romy? Little Pipsqueak. Oh, oh, I love it. Beautiful thing. Anyway, the radio, TV, or movie celebrity you hate the most is Rush Limbaugh. Nobody even close to Pill Pop and Rush 279, Dr. Phil 78, and Colder. That bitch is moving up with 70. Sean Hannity 64, and Bill O'Reilly 60. Mostly right wingers and other kind of phonies. If you missed our 10 to 11 hour today, which is kind of a bonus, you missed some really good stuff. For example, right? Was this the highlight? Huh? It is. By the way, Wayne Chandler is still alive. That's the good news. Oh! Wayne Ferris and Bill Ross, they sleep with the fishing boat, okay? And Buddy Epson, would you say he's dead? Yeah, that's it. Damn it.